thank you all so, so much for, uh, for joining us. Um, we, we know these are very hard times and, um, you know, a lot of uncertainty right now, but I think the, the positive to this is that you guys have time to do continuing education. And a lot of times we just don't have time for that in our lives because our lives are usually very busy and hectic. So we are so happy that we're able to support you guys, continue supporting you guys. We will keep these webinars going every week. Um, we may change them up a bit uh, just because we are now in our second round of the traditional way of doing didactic uh, for each technology. So we wanted to at least do two rounds of those so as many people as we could could join us. And then as we move forward, we'll kind of mix it up a bit. Um, I'm hoping to do a bit of hands-on um, on the webinar. So with the social distancing, it's obviously been kind of hard. So I'll keep looking into that and seeing if I'm able to do that. Okay, so let me just stop another video here. All right. Um, so today what we are going to cover is our um, two radio frequency handpieces, V-Form and VST. Um, we will cover another RF-based technology, which is the VFR, and that will be next week. Um, so we're, we're hoping you guys can join us uh, for that. So I'll just actually give you a rundown um, of the webinars we have coming up this week and next week. So we have um, today VForm and VST. On Thursday, we will be covering VIPL. Um, that starts a bit earlier um, just because it is a, a much longer didactic. So that actually starts, sorry guys, let me just mute everybody and stop the videos. Hey guys, as you come on, um, if you could just make sure to turn your video off and mute yourself, that will be really helpful. Um, so IPL is a lot uh, more in depth uh, with didactic. So we're starting a bit earlier. We'll start at 9 a.m. on Thursday. And I know a lot of you guys are coming from international. So I'm really happy you guys could join us, um, which will be a bit more helpful for you guys since we will be starting earlier. But it's 9 a.m. Pacific Coast uh, in the United States, so California time zone. Um, and then the following week, we will be covering uh, practice development, which is really nice. That's a long one as well. Um, that one can take upwards of four hours uh, because we do thoroughly cover, um, sorry, just trying to stop first video here. Um, we do thoroughly cover uh, really any aspect of practice development. So how to do perfect before and after photos, how to hold consultations, um, how to sell to, to clients, what to do now during this downtime to help businesses run um, as, as well as we can with the social distancing. So tips and tricks there. Um, how to hold open houses and events. So when things do normalize. Um, how to do charting and pricing strategies. Also membership programs. So we cover a lot. Um, and it takes anywhere from three to four hours, depending on also how many questions you guys have after we're done. Let me stop another video here. Okay, um, and then we will do the VFR uh, next week as well. Okay, so let's get started with the V-Form. Let me just mute all one last time. And I'm just going to send a message to my coworkers here uh, just to see if they can stay on top of the muting. Um, let's see. Let me stay on top of muting. Yeah. Um, so until they start doing that for me, let me just stop some videos here just so it's not distracting. Again, you guys, when you're signing in, if you'd um, just mute yourself and stop your video share, that will be really helpful for everybody. 
Um, if you could do that for me. Oh, yes. Okay, so hopefully my coworkers will will help me out with that. All right, so first uh, hand piece we're gonna go through is the V-form. And I actually have the V-form in front of me here um, with all of the, the tips that we'll be going through. Um, if you are a reaction customer, do not feel like you're left out in this webinar because um, I will be uh, covering the, the reaction at the same time as I am the V-form and the VST. Um, and I will point out the differences if you are a reaction customer to the V-form as we go. Um, and additionally, when we move into the next workbook, which is the VST, uh, your ST is it's the same protocols, it works the same as the VST. So you will absolutely be included um, within this, this webinar. Uh, all right, so V-form. Oops, technical difficulties there. <laughs> okay, so everything that the V form can treat. So this is the uh, V form handpiece, and I'll just clip on one of the tips. I'm just clipping on the medium one here, and um, we'll go through everything that it can treat. So we can treat cellulite, contouring, circumferential reduction, and skin tightening. So it does a lot. And the reason why it can really treat and focus on fat as well as skin tightening is it's because it depends on where are we putting the heat in the body. Are we putting the heat deep where our fat cells are? It's going to give one biological response. Are we putting the heat more superficial um, in more of our dermal layers? It's going to give a completely different biological response. So we'll go through that and the science of it. So first, what is radiofrequency? So radio frequency, it's a form of electromagnetic energy. And when this energy has contact with our tissue, really our body doesn't know what it is. It's something foreign to the body. And because it's foreign to the body, our cells and our body naturally reject it. When our body rejects the RF, then our cells start to oscillate. So we get a molecular movement and really it's generating heat. So you can think of it simplified as a um, heat-based treatment. It's just how our cells are responding to the RF. They're moving around, they're generating heat, which is then um, generating heat within the body. Again, we can put it in different depths to get different biological responses this way. Um, one big thing I wanna mention here is the importance of hydration. Patients should drink a liter to a liter and a half of water before every treatment. Now, I'll go further and say, I would recommend when you're holding a consultation with a patient, making sure they know the importance of drinking that much water every day throughout their full course of treatment. Reason why I say that is you may have patients that just don't love to drink water and they're drinking coffee and tea and wine and rarely pick up a bottle of water. So in that case, they may chug a liter of water as they're coming into your office, but are they really properly hydrated? No. So I would just, and, and if they're drinking a liter to a liter and a half of water every day as they should be, their skin is just gonna be overall really well hydrated. So the, the actual integrity of the skin is a lot better. Um, additionally, radio frequency is attracted to H2O, and that's really the chromophore that we want within the tissue. So that radio frequency is attracted to their tissue, their hyd hydrated tissue. Um, you can also go one step further and do a water calculator. So you can just calculate it on your phone. There's, um, you can Google it or even get an app for it that it asks their height and their weight and they'll give um, the proper amount of water that we should be drinking every day. For me, it's actually more than a liter and a half. I'm close to two liters of water every day. I'm, um, I'm tall, 5'9", so my body just overall needs more water than that. So you could go a step further and, um, and properly find out their water intake and what it should be. Okay, next page is um, we have two ways to deliver radio frequency to the tissue. So the very first cosmetic-based um, device that came out that was RF was monopolar. And the problem with monopolar, what does monopolar mean? It means that it, they were using one electrode and then they had to use a grounding pad. And usually the grounding pad was placed on the back. And the reason why they had to use a grounding pad is because radio frequency has to deliver and then receive. 
So the electrode on the handpiece was working as the positive, and then the grounding pad was working as the negative. So deliver, and then the grounding pad was receiving the energy. The problem with this is that they had to use really high amounts of radio frequency because it would have to scatter throughout the body to find that grounding pad. So that was creating two issues. One, discomfort, very uncomfortable because the high amounts of RF that needed to be used. Secondly, and moreover, is that because it wasn't controlled, it could create permanent divots in the tissue. So permanent fat loss in the face where they actually had a divot. Um, so to help with those complications, the next generation of RF came out and that's bipolar RF. So um, I'll just show you here the ST handpiece. This is the next handpiece we're gonna go um, into, but I'll show you as an example that this is bipolar energy. So one of the electrodes is working as the positive and the other electrode is working as the negative. So it's delivering and receiving. What's really great about this is there's gonna be no discomfort. I mean, of course, if you really turn it up too high and pulse too many times in one spot, so on and so forth, not doing the protocol right, then of course they can feel discomfort that way. But when you're really doing the treatment properly, it, there's really no discomfort because it's very controlled. And because it's very controlled, we're staying just between these two electrodes and we're having to use a relatively low amount of radio frequency to be able to do the exact same thing. So we're not getting any adverse like permanent fat obstruction um, when we don't want to and, um, and that high discomfort. Okay, so then the next generation of RF came out and that's multipolar. So I'll just show the large tip of the V form as an example. And by the way, those of you guys that have the reaction device, all of your hand pieces are bipolar energy. There's two electrodes there. One is working as the positive, the other one is working as the negative. Very controlled, um, we're, we're um, getting rid of that adverse that they could have and also very comfortable. But then we wanted to come out with something even larger. So with the V form, we did multipolar. So we can just have a much bigger hand piece. And the reason why we want a bigger handpiece is to be able to treat larger areas of the body. So we can treat larger BMIs. Um, we can keep heat if someone is a bit smaller and wants to do their flanks and their abdomen, we can keep heat now on both. Um, if a girl is, again, like smaller and, and fit, but she has cellulite on the back of her legs, we can keep heat on both legs at the same time on a lot of clients. So, and also we can preheat them very quickly because we have multiple electrodes. It's still working in a sense as bipolar energy. What I mean by that is RF can only deliver and then receive. So one of these electrodes is working as the positive, the other one is working as the negative. So when you hit the trigger, they are just switching positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. So that's why it's so important when you're using the V form that when you hit the trigger, let's say I just released a pulse of energy, that I do not lift up before I hear that chirp. And that is really where the arcs come from, which are very superficial blisters. Because remember, it's not just positive to negative delivery with one, it's positive to negative delivery with multiple. So you have to allow the handpiece to fully release all of the energy before you lift off the skin. So listening for that chirp and not pulling up too soon is so very, very important. Um, but it's, it's very similar to bipolar energy. It's just we're able to put multiple electrodes to have a larger handpiece for the reasons that I, that I described. And then also comfortable and much less adverse. Okay, so now we'll go into our RF biological responses. So we have two biological responses with the V form. And again, it depends on where are we putting the heat in the body. If I'm putting the heat deep, I'm gonna get one biological response. If I'm putting the heat a bit more superficial, I'm gonna get a different biological response. So we'll talk about our deepest depth first, which is going to be in the hypodermis or subcutaneous or adipose tissue, lots of different names for it. But this is gonna be in our subcutaneous fat layer. So when we put the heat deep here, what we need to have is a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. That temperature is going to be at least 39 to 42 degrees Celsius. We need to maintain within that zone. And we need to hold that temperature for 10 minutes in order to, it's called stimulate lipolysis. So this is when we're taking enlarged fat cells and in a sense, dehydrating them, shrinking them down. We also have a vacuum, which we'll go through. So we're working with the lymphatic system. So it's gonna help any type of like edema and fluids. 
Additionally, we're working with the circulatory system. When we work with the circulatory system, we are able to increase metabolism. So all of those things combined is how we're able to get really great results with, um, sorry, just stop somebody's video, um, with things like cellulite and contouring and super, uh, circumferential reduction. Um, now, that being said, the, the time and temperature to stimulate lipolysis, and by the way, it's different than apoptosis. Apoptosis is going to be destruction of fat cells. So things like cool sculpting. We can destroy fat cells with either really high heat temperatures or really cold freezing temperatures. And that's what cool sculpting is. And I just picked that one because it's the, the most known really. Um, and the reason why Viora wanted to do lipolysis instead of apoptosis is because of all the adverse you hear about with cool sculpting. And um, maybe some of you haven't heard about the adverse because of course they're not going to advertise it on the commercials that they play. Um, but there are a lot. And reason being is when you destroy fat cells in one area, it doesn't mean that when they gain weight, other fat cells will not enlarge in other places. So they can have things like shelving where you can actually see where the application was placed. Um, they can have things with um, uh, lumpiness, like a lumpy texture to the skin, because not everywhere on the body either heats or freezes at the exact same temperature. And what I mean by that is if I were you to use the V-form and let's say somebody's abdomen, and for those of you that have experience with it or the reaction, same thing if you were using the large one, the BC applicator, is everywhere on the on the abdomen heat the exact same at the exact same time? No, there's a bit of a of a difference there. And reason being is there's maybe fattier tissue, hydrated tissue, bonier tissue. So some areas will respond a bit differently. So that being said, it's good that we have a range. But if you only get to 39 degrees and just want to hold it there it's likely that some areas will drop under that temperature. And that's when we get into that issue of, we need to hold it for 10 minutes in order to stimulate the lipolysis in shrinking the fat cells down. So I like to push closer to 42 degrees. Reason being is if I, um, if I get to 42 degrees and I, some areas are dropping a bit lower, that's okay because it's not gonna jump, jump lower than 39 degrees. It will only be maybe 40 degrees, maybe 39. Um, Cause usually areas around the 42 degrees would only be about a degree to two degrees cooler than the 42 that I was holding. So I like to try to push towards 42 degrees if you can. All right, so that is when we are in our deepest depth, hypodermis. Now we'll talk about if we're a bit more superficial. And what I mean by a bit more superficial, in specific, it's the reticular and papillary dermis. We are never working as superficial as the epidermis, not with the V-form or VST. Think of those as deep tissue heating um, applicators. Things like um, the IPL. The IPL can work uh, superficial in the epidermis for, for um, like solar lentigo, sunspots, um, peels that you may do at your office. Those are working superficial in the epidermis. The VFR can also work superficial in the epidermis, but the V-form and VST, they're more so deep tissue heating applicators, hand pieces. So when we are taking it a bit more superficial from the hypodermis, it's in the reticular and papillary dermis. And what does the reticular and papillary dermis have a lot of? It's a full matrix of collagen and elastin. So what we're doing here with the same heat, still 39 to 42 degrees Celsius, is that we are able to stimulate fibroblast cells. With this heat and when we stimulate fibroblast cells, fibroblast cells are responsible for overall a healing mechanism that is able to do neocollagenesis. So we're able to stimulate new collagen. We're also able to strengthen existing collagen and elastin. So what happens there is we get more of a matrix. So we're able to get thicker skin because more collagen and elastin, but also we are able to tighten the tissue because that elastin has really started to lengthen. And when elastin and collagen start to lengthen, we start to get a droop or drop to our tissue. So when we're able to strengthen that, it becomes more resilient. It, it really bounces back. So that's where we get a lift. So think when we wanna lift the, the eyebrow, think when we wanna lift the lower face or someone that um, 
has had a baby and has laxity to their abdomen, we need to get that skin to really bounce back. And that's how we're able to do it is fibroblast cell stimulation, neocollagenesis, and in specific, it's types one and three collagen. Those are our cosmetic type collagen within our skin. Okay, so those are our two biological responses. Now we will go into how are we able to control being in those different depths? And this is called core technology. And it was, um, or it is a patent of ours. It's, so it's viewer's patent, therefore um, no other device has it, no other device can. So it's our proprietary technology that really makes us special within the market. And the reason being is we are able to very precisely control the depth of penetration. CORE stands for Channelizing Optimized Radio Frequency Energy. So we are able to, if you look here at this photo in the center, you can see these numbers here and also the numbers up here. This is how the radio frequency is traveling within megahertz. So with everything that we use pretty much in life, our cell phones, UV, um, the color spectrum, the colors of the rainbow and what we perceive colors for our eyes, um, microwaves, lasers, they all are part of the EM spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, and so is radio frequency. So when you're using things on the EM spectrum, we are using wavelengths. However, radio frequency is not measured in its wavelength. It's measured in the frequency in which the wavelengths travel. So for example, a frequency of a wavelength it, let's just take that we have a long wavelength. So a long wavelength is going to have a very low frequency, meaning it's only peaking, um, let's just say three times within a second. So a long wavelength peaks, goes down deep, peaks, goes down deep, peaks. So let's just take a long wavelength and say it peaks three times in the matter of a second, where a short wavelength is much faster, it's a higher frequency. So it, it may peak 30 times in the matter of a second, meaning it's staying more superficial. It doesn't have time to actually reach deeper into the tissue. So that's what these numbers are here. When you see 0.8 megahertz, it's a low and um, deep wavelength. Let me just stop some of these video really quick. And if you guys just jump on, you guys can stop your video and uh, mute yourself. Um, okay, so a long wavelength, very low frequency, actually traveling, traveling deeper in the tissue. Now, when we look at 1.7, the megahertz is speeding up, so we're getting a bit more superficial in the skin. And then when you see 2.45 megahertz, this is when it's much faster and staying much more superficial in the skin. So that's how we're able to control. Do we want to be in the hypodermis? Do we want to be in the reticular dermis? Or do we want to be in the papillary dermis? Um, the core technology also works for um, something additionally, but I'll talk about that just a bit. So first we'll just concentrate on those three depths of penetration. So I'm gonna talk about mode one first. So when you look at the screen, it's not having you choose point egg, uh, sorry, 0.8 megahertz, 1.7 megahertz, or 2.45 megahertz. It's having you choose modes, right? We simplified it. So I like to explain the modes like a three-story building. Think of mode one as like the first floor of a building, mode two like the second floor of a building, mode three like the third floor of a building. Now picture that building and just drop it into your skin. Where's mode one gonna be? Always our deepest depth. Where's mode three gonna be? Always our most superficial. So, and, and in, sometimes people get that backwards. When they see mode one, they think the most superficial, or sorry, the most superficial. But the reason why mode one is the deepest is because with RF energy, we always wanna work our deepest depth first. So that's why it's, it is created that way. Okay, so mode one using 0.8 megahertz, our deepest step. And where are we going? Into that fat layer. And what are we doing here? We're using the temperature between 39 and 42 degrees Celsius, try to push more towards 42. And we hold that for 10 minutes. When we do that, that's when we stimulate lipolysis, right? We increase the blood um, microcirculation, which therefore increases the metabolism. And that's going to help overall, we know what metabolism does, right? It fights fat. So that is where we are able to increase the metabolism. So we're able to shrink the fat cells. And additionally, we work with the lymphatic system. So we're able to get rid of any excess fluids that we have as well. Um, okay, so that's what we're doing in mode one. 
Now in mode two, by the way, mode two and three are pretty much the exact same thing. They do the exact same thing. The difference is one is a bit deeper than the other. And the reason why they do the same thing is both, um, let me just erase this really quick. Somebody just wrote on the screen, so I'll just erase that. Okay. Um, so with mode two and three, and the reason why they pretty much do the exact same thing, papillary and reticular dermis, is that the papillary and reticular dermis are both made up of collagen and elastin. Reticular has more and larger strands, but the papillary dermis still has collagen and elastin, just smaller strands, smaller matrix. They're not as, as large. Um, but we want to be able to target both because that will give us the ultimate skin tightening when we, when we deliver that energy precisely in both of those steps. So same temperature, 39 to 42 degrees. What we're doing here is we're stimulating fibroblast cells. And when we get fibroblast proliferation, that's fibroblast cells are responsible for the healing mechanism of making sure to really wake up that collagen elastin and start to remodel and get get more collagen elastin so we have thicker skin and also strengthening existing so we get tightening of our tissue. Um, MO2 is going to be in the reticular dermis and then MO3 is going to be in the papillary dermis. So a bit more superficial but doing the exact same thing. Okay so now we have a MO4. We only have three depths of penetration, still subcutaneous, reticular, and papillary, but we have a mode four. Mode four is going to be something special where we are able to deliver the energy in all three depths at the exact same time. So when we cho choose mode four, one third of the energy is going to go to the reticular derma, I'm sorry, the uh, ah, ah, subcutaneous. One third of the energy is going to go to the reticular dermis, and one third of the energy is going to go to the papillary dermis. Why do we have this and why do we need it? For two different reasons. One for a protocol, which I'm gonna talk about later, but additionally, the thing I'll talk about now is preheating the patient. If we can have all three depths going at the same time to build heat, we can preheat our patients very quickly. Uh, typically, preheating will take one to two minutes, I would say on most. However, it could take you up to five, six minutes. One thing I do wanna mention is don't allow your preheating to go over five to six minutes. Reason being is you're probably doing something that you need to adjust. Maybe you don't have your RF or vacuum level um, as high as you possibly could, which we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Maybe you're just trying to do too large of an area. Really for the large one as an example, it's pretty much four, um, I would say four to six uh, footprints of this. So if you put four to six of these together, let's just say this is one, two, three, four, possibly five, six. That is your zone size. So an abdomen is usually about four of these. Um, some, if, if they're smaller, another um, one on the side for their flanks and another one on this side for their flanks. So some people, you can, you can expand that treatment area because they're small enough to. But if someone comes in and they're larger with a larger BMI, therefore they have a larger abdomen, then you probably won't be able to hold heat on the flanks as well. You'll probably have to divide those areas. Um, for the reaction, it's one size of a sheet of paper. That is typically your zone size for the reaction. Um, but the V-form, it's a bit bigger. Why? Just because we have a larger handpiece and multiple electrodes. So if you're not preheating them in five to six minutes, just think of those things. How large of an area are you trying to treat? Can you adjust the RF or vacuum up a bit more? Um, what was their initial starting temperature? That's very important to um, determine before you ever start the treatment and make sure you're charting that as well. Because the next time they come back in, you can take a peek. Oh yeah, I remember this patient. She had lower circulation. If someone has like grade four cellulite on their legs, you touch it, it's ice cold to the touch typically. Why? There's very little and low circulation in the leg area where they have that bad, bad cellulite. So for them, it's probably gonna be harder to preheat them. And you wanna know that in the chart for the next time they come in, oh yeah, I remember I need to keep my zone size a bit smaller on this patient because there's circulation. So just some things to think about. Um, just don't allow your preheat to go too, too long. Okay, so that is one of the reasons why we use mode four and another reason we'll talk about in just a bit. 
So here's a photo of the reaction applicator, I'm sorry, the V-form applicators. We have a small, so this is going to be great for um, lower face and submental. Um, also arms, thinner arms, and above the knees if they need like a knee lift um, or even contouring on the knees. Then we have the medium, which I popped onto the hand piece. So this one's gonna be great for flanks because they're a smaller curved area. Um, a lot of times on the back of the legs, especially if it's a thinner girl who's getting cellulite done, um, this will stay on the legs typically much easier than the, than the large. If someone has larger arms, this one's gonna be great if it will fit. And then we have the large, and this is going to be good for um, legs as well, especially if they have larger legs. Full abdomen, um, if they're much larger and their flanks are much larger, then this can, if it, this is what I say. If the applicator fits without you coming off the skin, then that's the applicator size you should use uh, to get optimal results. So like, I don't know, a man's back or a woman's bra fat on her back. If this fits well, you can use it. If not, you have the medium applicator um, to choose from. Okay, so those are our applicators. And then also I wanted to mention, there's a big difference in depth of penetration between this one and this one. Reason being is we do have that core technology where we can deliver the energy where we want it to. However, there's something additional where the RF energy will go into the skin half the distance between the electrodes. So look at the distance, I'll just hold these up because it's easier. Look at the distance of the electrodes between this and this. So if this is only going half the distance and then this is going half the distance, if you try to do an abdomen with this, even if we have core technology, it's not gonna reach the depth of fat tissue that you want it to, where this one is gonna go much deeper. Where is the fat located on our lower face compared to our abdomen? There's a huge difference in measurement. Our fat is much more superficial here when you look in terms of measuring the depth compared to our abdomen. So make sure that you're not trying to use something small like this on areas of the body that the fat is much deeper like the legs and the abdomen. Okay, um, now thin skin areas, like I was saying arms, then that's okay. All right, so now we'll talk about the vacuum. So the vacuum is so very, very, very important for many different reasons. Um, one is the depth of penetration. So that also helps us with getting deep. The higher the vacuum, which we have an option between vacuum one through four. So the higher the vacuum, the more um, tissue you're coupling into the applicator, therefore the deeper the heat is gonna go. So always keep that in mind, because that's a very important thing when you're, when you're treating things like the abdomen and the back of the legs. Um, additionally, it's going to help with the lymphatics, right? So when we have all that excess fluid buildup, especially when we're working with shrinking the fat cells, we need to be able to, to work with the lymphatic direction because we're working with um, fat cells that carry fluid in them. Um, so if you ever forget, just always think towards the heart. Or when you get sick, where are you achy? Where are your lymph nodes aching? So the face, we're working out towards the ear. The arms, we're working down into the underarm or towards the heart. Um, legs, we're working up towards the heart. Abdomen is actually going a bit against towards the heart. Abdomen, we're working in. You can even work in and down because a large part of our lymphatic system is found in the groin. So we're actually working towards the groin area of the abdomen. Um, the, if you're doing the butt, the buttocks for cellulite, we're working out. Um, okay, so it helps with the lymphatic system. Also, it increases circulation, microcirculation. And when we increase micro, mark, bleh, microcirculation to the tissue, a few things are gonna happen. One, we're getting overall oxygen and nutri uh, nutrition. Uh, oh my gosh, I cannot speak, you guys. Well, I have to stop somebody's video, so it gives me a second to <laughs> stop getting jumbled. Um, nutrition, uh, what? Nutrition, nutrition, nutrients, nutrients. Why can't I say that word? Oxygen and nutrients to the tissue. When we do that, we have overall healthier tissue to work with. Um, additionally, we are increasing circulation, therefore it increases metabolism. And we know what metabolism does, right? The higher the metabolism we have, the smaller our fat cells are going to stay. 
Um, and then a, one other thing, which I'm just going to kind of skip through the workbook, is we are also working with cellulite in an optimal way with a vacuum. So I'll talk about that. I'm just going to skip a few things really quick and talk about cellulite really quick. Okay, so over 86% of women have cellulite. Doesn't matter how thin they are because it can just be overall genetics, hormones, um, really hormonal components. And under 8% of men do. Again, we have different hormones than men. So it's going to be a lot harder for men to have cellulite. Really, they need to be in that obese category than women. We can be really fit and, and thin and still suffer from cellulite. So reason for that, more so hormones, but why do we have that dimpling? So we can see here, these are called septae. And the septae, that's our connective tissue bands. So our subcutaneous fat cells, that is what's holding really all of those sub-Q fat cells in, is the septae. So when our fat cells start to enlarge because of overall weight gain, hormones, genetics, whatever it may be, those fat cells start to enlarge and they start to really push on the septae. The septae are supposed to be nice and fluid. They're not supposed to be rigid. So when they start to enlarge and they start to push on the septae, the septae become very rigid. What happens there is that they start to pull down on the tissue. So that's where we get one little dimple. Then our fat cells really have nowhere to go but up and they start to push from below. So our fat cells are pushing and then the rigid septae are pulling down and that's what's giving us that orange peel dimpling appearance. Now the vacuum, with vacuum and heat, we are able to massage these septae so they become nice and fluid again, um, no longer rigid and pulling down on the, on, the, um, on the skin. And then we know that in mode one, we can shrink fat cells. So in mode one, we shrink the fat cells down so they're nice and small sitting low at the bottom. We have these loose and massaged septae. And then additionally, we are able to thicken the skin, right? We know that we can put the heat in the dermal layers, so thickening the skin. So that's what gives us our overall smoothing appearance of cellulite, shrinking fat cell, thickening the skin, and, and massaging these septae. So that's one huge importance of the vacuum. So I just wanna lock that into your minds when you um, are working with your patient and which vacuum you're choosing, it's very important for those multiple reasons. When you're treating somebody that has something like um, uh, anything fat related, so cellulite, contouring, circumferential reduction, all of the, the vacuum components are so important of giving them the optimal results. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the filters. So you have um, little filters within each tip of the V-form. So there, there will be a filter in the small, there will be a filter in the large, and there will be a filter in the medium. So the large is the only one that has two filters. So I'll talk about the first one. Just right inside here, this little knob, you have a little filter and it's white, and it's this little guy here, the little round one. This filter on the large, it's called the external filter. This needs to be changed, let me just stop somebody's video. This needs to be changed after every treatment. So if a patient is coming in for both their legs and abdomen, this needs to be changed if you finish with the abdomen before you go to the leg treatment. And reason being is it's catching glycerin and you never want glycerin to get into your handpiece. So if you don't change it, that's when this can really become soaked and then you can start compromising the vacuum within the handpiece because that's where the glycerin goes is within the vacuum tube and you don't want that to happen. This filter has a smooth side and a fuzzy side. Try to remember it's fuzzy side up. That's what helps catch more of the glycerin. So that fuzzy side will face you when you put it in. So this one's really easy. It just pops in here. And then all you have to do is push this little black tab in the middle down, it clicks and you're done. Now each of, like I was saying, each of the um, tips have an additional filter and that's called the internal filter. So it's actually located right there in the center. 
So with your handpiece came an Allen wrench and a little bag of tiny little white round silicone filters. So all you do is you just pop the Allen wrench right inside there, unscrew it, pull it out, and then you'll pull out the little white round filter. This needs to be checked every week. So if you're absolutely not using your V-Corm at all, then no, of course, you don't have to ch check it every week. If maybe, you know, you're not working at your office right now and you're at home, you don't need to check it. However, when you're back to the office and you're using it on a regular basis, making sure to look at it every week is so important. So when you look at all three of them, just make sure that they're nice and white, they're clean, but they're also dry. So really feel them. If there's any type of glycerin that is coming off on your hand, that's when it needs to be changed. So if ever it looks dirty or there's actually um, a visible sign of glycerin on it, you'll switch it out. So I would just make a note, like a calendar reminder or a note in your office that they need to be checked like every Monday or every Friday, whichever day of the week you want to do it, but just make sure not to forget that. Um, now, the actual handpiece has a filter as well. Most of the V-forms do. Some of them don't, but most of them have this little guy here. So those also, um, it, with your handpiece came a little Allen wrench that fits inside there. I think it's a bit smaller than the other. And um, they're more of like a rectangle shaped filter. And there's, you actually put two of them inside. So they double up. They also have a fuzzy side and a smooth side. So you'll double them up with the fuzzy side facing you. And those also need to be checked every week. Again, if they have any signs of glycerin on them, that's when you'll switch them out. Okay, so that's the filter. Filter just helps really keep your handpiece functioning properly. We know you spent good money on your handpiece and you want it to work, um, of course, properly. So maintenance of this and checking them every week is so important. And switching the large one out after every treatment is so important as well. All right, so now we'll go into, I'll talk about the test procedure actually um, here on this on this page. Um, if you guys do have your workbook in front of you and you're following along with the actual hard copy making notes, you guys, as I'm going through the body contouring protocol, the body contour protocol is between page 19, 20, 21, and 22. You can follow along that way. Um, I primarily just stay on this page just so you can see all of the phases right here in front of us. So let me just see if I can zoom in here. I don't know why it won't let me. Hmm. That's weird. Oops. Better not play around with this too much. Hmm. It always lets me zoom. Okay. Well, I guess it's it's gonna be stubborn today. So Hopefully you guys can see that all right. Um, all right, so the first protocol we'll go through is body contouring protocol. Now we named it body contouring, but it's not just for body contouring. It's anything fat related. So body contour protocol also is the protocol you would use for cellulite, and it's also the protocol you would use for circumferential reduction. Um, now we'll walk through the steps on how you're going to do the treatment. First, we're always using glycerin. So we want to make sure the skin is prepped. I like using baby wipes. I'm a big fan of a baby wipe. <laughs> um, reason being is you can get the ones that are sensitive skin, fragrance-free, hypoallergenic, and you know that most likely their skin is not going to react in a negative way to them. Some soaps, some, um, some makeup wipes, things like that can create irritation to the skin where then they think the handpiece and the technology did it and they're scared to get treatments. So that's why I, I more so prefer just doing um, a baby wipe. So making sure you clean the skin, remove any type of um, oils, lotions, makeup, things like that. And then we're using glycerin. The amount of glycerin that you're using is so important. We're never ever um, saturating the, the patient with it. Reason being is if you have too much glycerin, all that's gonna happen is one, it's gonna be a, become a mess for you. It's dripping off the patient. It's all over you, it's all over them. But moreover, you have a strong vacuum and that vacuum is just going to 
suck it up and it's going to end up getting your filters really dirty and you're going to have to change them more often. Um, and additionally, you are able to compromise the vacuum. So you don't want to do that. The amount of glycerin you should be using is the skin should look like just a light sweat on the skin. That's it. Just like maybe they went to the gym and they just are barely sweating. Um, no more. So you'll prep the skin with glycerin. Also, you're, you're never using anything but glycerin. Um, I've had some offices try to use baby oil and jojoba oil and vegetable oil, and I've seen it all. And there's three problems with that. One, the handpiece does not know how to filter out oil, so it will end up destroying the handpiece. Um, and then moreover, actually two, oil just absorbs into the skin. So it's not even helpful for you to glide. But moreover, it was creating burns on the skin because it's an oil. So oil and the um, RF energy are, are not going to respond well together. So the patient had blisters, do not wanna do that. So always 100% vegetable glycerin. Um, it's really easy to find. If you guys live in the States, you can even order it on myviora.com. Uh, if you run out and you're like, oh no, we don't have any, any pharmacy sells it um, and you can get it online too. Just make sure that it is 100% vegetable glycerin. <gasps> Aww, hi Safi. I just saw um, our distributor from Dubai pop on. <laughs> we miss you. Uh, okay, so, um, so always uh, glycerin, never any oil. Okay. So we prep the skin, which it should just look like a light sweat on the skin. And now we're going to start doing the treatment. I'm going to just say we're doing somebody's abdomen with the large. Now, what do you set your screen to? We always need to preheat the patient, right? So um, stop me very quick. Um, we're always preheating the patient and we're always preheating them in mode four, right? Because remember mode four, all three depths are being preheated at the exact same time. Um, so setting it to mode four, and then we need to select our RF energy level and our vacuum level. So remember, we talked about the vacuum. We have a level between vacuum one and four we can choose. And then we have the exact same thing with the, um, with the RF. We have an option between one and four. For the V form, I have yet to see the medium or large bruise anybody with a vacuum four. So I prefer doing, this is really easy to remember, four fours, RF four, vacuum four, mode four, and I like to do four stacked pulses. So what I mean by that is I hold it on the skin and I trigger and I don't move it. I just hold the trigger down, one, two, three, four, release wait for the chirp. I have to hear, hear the chirp before I lift off the skin if I'm going to, but you're actually sliding it. So slide one, two, three, four, slide one, two, three, four, slide one, two, three, four. So that's what I mean by um, four stacked pulses. With the abdomen though, we would actually be working in. So I would do one, two, three, four, move in, one, two, three, four, come out, one, two, three, four, move in, one, two, three, four. So four fours, mode four, RF four, vacuum four, holding it down, four stacked pulses. Um, if you're having a hard time preheating them, you can go up to six stacked pulses, but this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where the testing is very important. So I will put it on vacuum four and RF four to make sure they're comfortable. I'll do the four stacked pulses and I'll stop and I'll ask them, how was that? Was that comfortable? If they say yes, wonderful. Then I know I can keep going. If they say no, is a bit uncomfortable. I have to determine what was uncomfortable. Was it too much heat? Was the vacuum too strong and it felt too pinchy? If they, so I'll ask them, did it, was it like a pinchy sensation or too high, um, too, too much heat, that kind of sensation? And then if they tell me pinching, I'll take it down to vacuum three. If they say it was too much heat, then I'll try to do less stacked pulsing, but still keeping the RF at four. So then I'll try three stacked pulses. Was that okay? Yes, wonderful. Now you know you can do three stacked pulses, but still keeping that RF level high and that vacuum level high. So there's things that you can adjust to keep the patient comfortable, of course. Now, I was talking about grade four cellulite and how it's ice cold to the touch and there's very low circulation in the area typically. So with them, sometimes I'm needing to do five or six stacked pulses. 
So again, I'll, I'll ask them, I'll do four. Was that comfortable? Most of the time they're going to say yes, because the circulation is already so low that they're not feeling too much heat. Okay, great. Then I'll try if I'm having a really hard time preheating them. I've been doing four stacked pulses and the temperature is barely going up. Then I'll try five. I'll ask them, was that okay? Was the last one too, too much, too hot? They say no. Great. I'll try heating them for a minute or two. If your temperature is barely going up, then I'll move to six stack pulses. Again, I'll make sure that they're comfortable. And I always tell them, if the last one becomes a bit too much, it starts to become too bitey, let me know. Then I'll just drop my stack pulses down. So that's how I, how I typically do it with, with stacking pulses. I've never gone over six though, it's a bit too much. Um, there's another technique, because I just hold it down in one spot, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six. But there's another technique that you'll see in the workbook that you can actually move it. And it's like a flowering technique. I don't do that technique just because it hurts my wrist, moving it around like that in one spot. But, you know, that's up to you. One of my clinical trainers loves to do that technique of one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, just moving it. Um, so, you know, it's, your, it's really your preference. Okay, so that's for the V form. I typically set it at RF4, vacuum four, of course, mode four, and then four to six stack pulses. Now, for the reaction customers out there, it's a bit different. Your vacuum and heat is a bit too much because it's, it's much more condensed because your hand pieces are smaller, where the vacuum and heat on ours is more dispersed. Because yours is so condensed, I usually do vacuum three, RF three, and then I'll do like four to six stack pulses. Um, of course you can do RF4 and vacuum four. It's just, is your patient gonna be able to sit through it? That's the only thing. So of course test, you know, maybe they can and you can do that. Um, if they start to bruise really bad on the vacuum four, then I would definitely take it to a vacuum three. And by the way, speaking on bruising, Bruising is so very important to talk to your client about in a consultation. It's when you don't tell them that there's a possibility of bruising, that's when you're going to get the call of, what did your device do to me? I'm bruised. But if they know beforehand that there is a possibility of bruising, I always give this example. Um, it's a vacuum. So what would happen if I, if I sucked on your neck? You're going to hickey, right? It's, it's a suction. So you're going to get the petechiae, the little red dots that you know you're, broken, you're breaking blood vessels. So the same thing can happen with, with the V-form. It uses a vacuum. So just make sure that, there is, that they know that there is a possibility, even though it's more rare. The only time that I really see bruising with the V-form is sometimes on the lower face, sometimes on the submental. We're never doing the neck, just here where the fattier tissue is, and sometimes on the arms. So I'll talk about that you need to really decrease your vacuum with those areas because those are so susceptible to bruising. Um, okay, so making sure you tell them. Um, and then I, I spoke about reaction. Um, of course, you're on mode four, but typically it's vacuum three, RF three. All right, so now we preheat them and we make sure that we're working in the lymphatic direction and we get them to temperature, which is, of course, between 39 and 42 degrees. Remember, I like to push more towards 42 degrees, so if I fall under a bit, I'm still in that zone. So I actually work a minute or two longer just to get them 42 degrees almost everywhere. And then I move forward. Again, preheat shouldn't take you more than five to six minutes though. Um, now, this is when we're actually setting timers. Let me just uh, erase the, they drew on the screen here really quick, there we go. Um, okay, so now this is when we're actually doing the protocol after we preheat them, we start to set timers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go deep into mode one. Remember, it goes mode one, deepest depth, fat layer. Mode two, a little bit more superficial, reticular dermis, collagen elastin. Mode three, the most superficial, papillary dermis, again, collagen and elastin. And we're actually using all three of those modes within this protocol. So, you know, you look at that and go, okay, we do go to the adipose tissue for 10 minutes for, for shrinking the fat cells. Why are we doing mode two and three? Why are we even working with the dermal layers if we're just trying to contour the abdomen down? Reason being is if she came into me, this picture here on the left, what's going to happen when I remove a lot of her fat volume? What's going to happen to her skin? It's going to become lax. Well, now we've replaced one problem with another. We 
never want that to happen. So that's why we always do mode two and three at the tail end of a cellulite treatment to thicken the skin, um, for a contouring treatment to tighten the skin as we remove volume. Okay, so preheat them in mode four. Now we go to mode one, our deepest depth, and we set the timer for 10 minutes. You're gonna keep the vacuum high if possible, because remember the, the positives of the vacuum, we're increasing circulation, we're increasing depth of penetration, we're cellulite, we're massaging septe. Um, for contouring, we're, we're increasing the metabolism and working with the lymphatics, all of the excess fluids within the area. So the higher the vacuum you can keep it, the better you will be when you're in mode one. Um, your RF level will just be um, whatever it needs to be to maintain that 39 to 42 degrees. So if you're at RF4, you can keep it there. If you start going way over temperature, you're hitting 43, 44, 45 degrees, then just drop your RF level down. I sometimes get the question of, but if I have to drop my RF level down all the way to one because they keep going over temperature, does that mean that the patient's not gonna get a good treatment compared to if we kept it at RF4? No. Um, remember how RF works. It's the way, it's, it's the rejection process. When I put RF energy into the body, the body naturally rejects it. So our cells start to oscillate. So it doesn't matter if you're on RF1 or 4. What matters is what is that temperature gauge reading? Is it reading that you're over 42 degrees? That's all that matters, that you drop that RF level down. Doesn't mean they're, they're going to get a different um, result because you're holding the temperature of the body. You know those cells are oscillating and generating really good heat. So sometimes you do have to drop the RF level down quite a bit as you're moving throughout the treatment. Um, another thing that changes in mode one is you're not typically doing as many stacked pulses because now they're heated. If you do four stacked pulses in one area, a lot of times they're gonna jump. Ah, that was hot. Why? Well, they're already heated, that's why. So you're typically only doing maybe one pulse, maybe two pulses, but how do you know? What is the temperature measure reading? Uh, what is the temperature gauge, the IR thermometer reading? Is it reading that you're 42 degrees here in this one spot? All you have to do is hit release one pulse then to maintain it. You move to the next spot and it's down to 40 degrees, then release two to three pulses to get, get it back up to 42. So you're really just working as the temperature is telling you to work. One, one pulse if you're at 42. If you're under it, two to three pulses until you see it rise up. Um, and then with the reaction, you have your external uh, thermometer. You're just picking it up and measuring as you go, and then you're adjusting your stacked pulses as need be. Okay, so then the timer goes off and we go to mode two. So now we're going to incorporate the little bit of skin tightening at the tail end or a little bit of thickening the skin if we're doing cellulite. So we're going to go to mode two and mode three at the end, and we do both of those for two minutes and two minutes. So we go to mode two first, set the timer for two minutes. Then when we're done with that, we go to mode three, our most superficial, set the timer for two minutes. Your technique can change. And the big thing is that the vacuum always changes. So whenever you go to mode two and three, always drop the vacuum to one. Never two, never three, never four. Always vacuum one. Reason being is remember that the vacuum aids in depth of penetration. So at this point, we don't want to push the heat too deep back into the fat layer. At this point, we want the frequency to do the work for us. Remember, we were talking about 0.8 megahertz, 1.7 megahertz, 2.45 megahertz. It's the way the frequency is traveling. So vacuum one is just enough vacuum to have contact with the tissue, but then the frequency will go into the reticular and papillary dermis the way they should. Um, the technique can change with mode two and three as well. Instead of doing stacked pulses and working in the lymphatic direction, because we're no longer deep in the lymphatics at this point, we're superficial. You guys can glide on the skin if you'd like. If you're just starting out with this handpiece and gliding can potentially come off the skin and create an arc, then don't do that right away. Just keep doing the stacked pulses. One, two, one, <laughs> two, or um, not stacked, sorry, single pulses, or if you need to do stacked pulses, one, two, one, two, and maintaining that temperature the whole time. But if you're, um, if you're, you've been using it for a while and you feel really comfortable with it, then you can just do a constant gliding back and forth in the area to maintain temperature.
By the way, you're never doing this area <laughs> uh, with the V-form. I was just showing you that just because it's really the only area that's showing right now. Um, okay, so then timer goes off. Now we're done with the treatment. And again, this is why I love baby wipes because you can take a baby wipe and quickly clean off that glycerin because glycerin is really sticky and hard to get off. And a baby wipe, just a quick wipe down and they're good and they're out the door. Um, okay, so that is the contouring protocol. By the way, at the end of this, I am going to open it up for questions. So if you guys have questions, you can do um, one of two things. You can write them down at, so you don't forget. And then at the end, um, you guys can unmute yourself and ask me and we can have a conversation that way. That's my favorite just because everybody can hear the conversation. Um, or you can write it down in the chat box. Um, there at the bottom of the screen, there's an area where you can um, write questions and I can go through them at the end. All right. Now, oops. Um, so these next couple pages, it's just showing, you know, preheating and, um, you know, direction, which direction you're working in. Remember, we're working with lymphatics. So that's just a helpful thing of showing the direction that you'll be moving in. All right, so now here, I'm gonna to come to the treatment schedule. So number of treatments. We have here three to eight. However, even though some patients can see a nice result in three, if they just had like a little pooch on their belly or um, a, a little bit of fat, I don't know, maybe on their jawline, some people can see a result in three. However, I would not sell a package of three. I would do a small package of six and a larger package of eight. And the reason being is, what if you get to three and they're not quite happy and you're looking and you're going, oh yeah, she could have used a bit more, he could have used a bit more. It's better to sell too many than too little. And if they're happy at four treatments and they bought a package of six, that's not a waste because we always need to do maintenance treatments. You can tell them, let's save one for maintenance in three to four months and let's take the other one and treat your eyes. And they're like, oh my gosh, this machine can treat my eyes. I thought I could just contour or do cellulite. No, it does a lot. So it just opens their eyes on everything that you have to offer. And once you treat their eyes, if that was something that it was a concern of theirs, then usually they're hooked and it rolls them over into another package. So um, also helps you in the long run. But yeah, small package of six, large package of eight for safety. Um, treatment intervals, one treatment per week. This is very, very, very important that they stay on this protocol. Um, if they call you and say, oh, my daughter had a dance recital, I can't make it this week, and um, you, know, you try to get them in as soon as you can, and then two weeks later they say, oh, we're gonna go to Greece for two weeks, no, it, it, you, they're really not going to get the result they need. Reason being is we need that metabolism to stay revved up to properly treat the patient. So in the consultation, making sure they know that, making sure that they can dedicate that time. Um, I even re recommend picking a day of the week. Let's say they're off on Mondays and just scheduling them out, scheduling them every Monday for eight weeks or every Monday for six weeks will be very helpful for you and them. Um, it should be once a week and it could be plus or minus one day. All right, and then maintenance will be one treatment every three to four months to maintain. Some, especially younger clientele, can hold results a bit longer, so they could potentially do once every six months, but optimally it would be one, one treatment every three to four months in the treatment area. All right, so that is the body contour and cellulite protocol. I already went um, through cellulite, so we'll skip this page. One more protocol we're going to talk about um, that the V-Form can do. It has two protocols, contouring, which is anything fat related, and then the second one, refit. Once I'm done going through refit, we're going to take a bathroom break because I don't want anybody to miss anything. <clears throat> so once we're done with this, we'll take 10 minutes use the restroom, get coffee, whatever we need, water, I actually should drink something right now. I live in the desert, I live in Las Vegas, so I'm talking, 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 my throat is so dry. Um, you know, get coffee, get water, and then we'll come back and we'll go through the VST workbook next. So first we'll go through this protocol, 10 minute break, then the ST. All right, so now we'll go into refit. And what helped me remember this name and what it does is these patients that you're seeing here, this one is post-traumatic weight loss. 
This one is post baby belly. This one again is post dramatic weight loss. So you're looking at them and you actually can see, I need to refit their skin to their body. So that's what the refit protocol is for, skin tightening. And the type of patients that would need this protocol is post baby belly and they have laxity, post dramatic weight loss and they have laxity in the abdomen or their arms or their legs. Um, or just overall aging. And we have loose skin on our arms. We have loose skin on our inner thighs. Those are the two areas that become lax um, quickest in our, in our life because they're very thin skin. Um, we have um, some crepiness and loose skin above our knees and we can give a knee lift result. Um, or we have a little bit of jowling. So we have, um, when we're youthful, when we smile or just in general, our fat is in the upper face, right? It's here in the cheeks. As we age, we dramatically lose fat in our cheeks and we start to unfortunately accumulate it in the lower face and the submental. So this protocol also helps with getting rid of jowls, that fat accumulation and tightening the lower face, tightening the skin. Um, okay, so how is it doing that? Uh, let me just wait. There's some comments coming in. So I just, okay, there we go. Um, so if you take a peek at this, um, I wish I could zoom in. I don't know why it won't let me. Mm. Let's see, do I have another picture of it? No. All right. Sorry, it's so small, you guys, um, but I'll explain it. So this photo here is really what the refit is doing. So the refit, it's easy to do and it's easy to remember because you are using mode four the entire time. Why are we using mode four the entire time? Well, we always have to preheat the patient in mode four, but we're never switching the modes like we did for contouring and cellulite. Reason why we stay in mode four, and remember I said mode four is used for two reasons. It's used for preheating and it's used for one of our protocols. So in mode four, one third of the energy is going to the subcutaneous, one third of the energy is going to the reticular dermis and one third of the energy is going to the papillary dermis. So when we set the timer, the timer is set for 14 minutes after we preheat them and we keep it in mode four, the dermal layers where the collagen and elastin are, are constantly getting hit for 14 minutes. They may see a bit of fat reduction, which is nice too, but it's dramatic skin tightening because that heat is so focused in the reticular and papillary dermis. Additionally, after we preheat them, we always drop the vacuum to one. When we set, drop the vacuum to one, when we set the timer for 14 minutes, remember that the vacuum aids in depth of penetration. So if we didn't drop the vacuum to one, we're gonna end up potentially getting more fat loss than we are skin tightening. We want the frequencies to do the work for us. So vacuum one, and we're really focusing superficial where we need to be. Why this is so great for jowls is that our fat depth on our lower face is very different than our abdomen, like I was speaking about earlier. <clears throat> so it's much more superficial. So when we're using the refit protocol, one third of the energy is gonna go to the fat and two thirds of the energy is gonna go to skin tightening. So if, I, um, if a lady came into me and she had jowls and I just tried to do skin tightening on her, let's say I, I had the ST hand piece and I just tried to tighten the skin, is she really gonna be happy? No, why? Because she still has that fat accumulation that's creating that jowl look. Of course she has laxity, but she also has fat. So that's where the refit is so phenomenal, is that one third of it is shrinking that fat down in that jowling area, the bulldog jowls, also here in the submental area if they need it, and two thirds of the energy is doing skin tightening on the lower face and also submental. We're always being very careful when we're using the V-form small on the face because we never, ever, ever want to take it above the cheekbone because we never, ever want to decrease fat in our cheeks only in the lower face if they have fat accumulation. So now we know that we can do two protocols for the lower face with this one, right? We can just contour. So if someone comes in who's young and doesn't have any skin tightening issues but has a double chin, then we can contour. But if someone comes in a bit older and they're starting to get the jowls or they already really do have the jowls, then we can use the refit protocol on the lower face here, which is such a beautiful, beautiful result. Um, so the same, we're still using glycerin. We're still preheating the same way. If they can tolerate vacuum four, RF4, 
fine, you could do that. If they have a ton of laxity and the vacuum is a bit too pinchy on vacuum four, just take it lower, that's fine. Um, then we set the timer for 14 minutes, stay in mode four, drop the vacuum to one. Um, there can be two techniques with refit. You can either glide, let me actually grab the medium and, and pretend like I'm doing an arm. So you can glide and hold the trigger down. If you can maintain contact, that's what's so very important that you're never losing contact because that's what can create an arc on the tissue. Um, or if you're not quite that confident yet to glide, then just do pulses, one, two, or one, two, three, if they need it, or just one if they're maintain, maintaining temperature really well. So that's how it would be. You're not working in the lymphatic direction, it's not necessary. You can if you want though, um, but you know, not necessary because you're on vacuum one, so you're pretty superficial. Um, okay. Next is this one and talking about the vacuum. With this one on the lower face or submental, we are never, ever, ever above a vacuum two. We never use vacuum three or four on the face. It can severely bruise. Even a vacuum two can bruise. So I usually like to start on a vacuum two just so I can preheat them quicker. But as soon as I see a little petechiae, those little red dots that you're like, uh-oh, okay, I know I broke those blood vessels in that area, they're gonna bruise, I immediately drop it to vacuum one. If you wanna be extra safe, let's say, I don't wanna stop doing my treatment this week, but I have um, a wedding to go to, then just stay safe, do vacuum one. Um, you know, it doesn't so much matter if we bruise on the body, but when someone bruises on the face, of course, it's harder to hide it. Um, if you do end up with a couple bruises and they really, you know, are, are not wanting them on the face and you guys have the IPL, then you can just IPL right over it with the 580 filter. Um, we'll talk about that Thursday on how to actually do the treatment, but you can immediately break up that bruising as soon as you're done. And typically the next day when they wake up, there is no bruising if you do that technique of the IPL 580. Um, also be very careful on thin skin areas of the body. So even a vacuum three can bruise the arms. So I usually like to start with a vacuum two. If I'm having a really hard time preheating them, I'll try a vacuum three if I need to use the small one. Um, but I'm just very careful in monitoring if I see any petechiae because that's the first signs of bruising. And they can use Arnica too over it just to, if you don't have the IPL um, to treat the bruising. Okay, um, now how I'm looking down here at the bottom, how many treatments? So number of treatments, eight to 12. Now 12, that's a lot. So the person that would need more so 12 is here and here. It's, a, it's you know, dramatic, post-dramatic weight loss. Maybe they had a lap band or gastric bypass, or maybe they lost 200 pounds on their own with diet and exercise. Um, that's the type of patient that would need more 12 treatments. If Let's just say this patient came into you or this patient came into you and you're looking, you're going, mm, you know, how much can a device do? You have to be honest with your clients. Um, are they to the point where they may need surgery, right? A tummy tuck. Well, let's just say that your patient does not want to go the surgical route. They either can't because of money, they can't because of time, they are scared of the risk of infection, or they just don't, they can't afford it. So they need to, to do something else. Um, or you have the patient that's kind of thinking about doing a tummy tuck, but they wanted to see if there was something out there um, besides surgery. It's never, ever a waste of money for them. Let's say this is your patient that came in and you did 12 treatments and there was still a bit of laxity there. And they say, okay, well now I'm gonna get a tummy tuck because we tried it all. Because there are cases where there's so much skin, you know, there's only so much that a device can do. Just think of it this way, they're never wasting their money by doing that series of 12 treatments, ever. The reason being is a lot of our Viora's plastic surgeons put them on the protocol refit before they ever go in and do surgery. The reason being is you're helping the overall integrity of the skin, right? We're making sure that the integrity of the skin is really healthy. So when you have really healthy tissue, that is a much better way of going into surgery than without it. So they're never wasting their money. 
if they want to try it and see if they're happy after the 12, great. Maybe they're ecstatic and they don't want to do surgery anymore and they're just so grateful for the results that they got. Um, or let's say, oh, they wanted more. Okay, still, we helped the inte integrity of the skin. The surgery is going to go better. They're going to heal better. It's going to look better. It's just a positive all around. Um, somebody like this, with just uh, that's more post baby belly, they can get really phenomenal results even after eight treatments, and they um, would not be the type that would need that tummy tuck after those treatments. Um, so eight to twelve, um, I would say you're really only looking at twelve treatments when it's again really post traumatic weight loss. If it's somebody that just has like loose skin on their arms above the knees, post baby belly. Um, somebody with jowls, then that's more eight treatments. Okay, treatment intervals is one treatment every two to four weeks. So why are we spacing it out longer than we were for contouring? Contouring, we have to make sure that they're coming in on a weekly basis. So why are we spacing it out longer for this? Reason being is, remember, it's the proliferation of fibroblast cells. So we're, we're actually working with healing and collagen and elastin. That process is very slow within the body. So when we go in with heat and we stimulate fibroblast cells, the proliferation of actually getting to the point of the neocollagenesis, the remodeling of, of new collagen, strengthening existing collagen elastin is a longer period. So the full, um, the full time that that collagen takes to really remodel is three to four months, even out to six months and sometimes even out to a year on some patients. But we're not doing a treatment and waiting three to four months for the collagen to fully remodel. For us, it's gonna be a build on injury. So a controlled, really, injury when we, when we um, stimulate those fibroblast cells with heat. So when they're under 60 years old, six zero, they can come in every two weeks because their proliferation, their fibroblast proliferation is much faster. But when we start looking at patients older than 60, this is when the healing process really slows down. So, um, you know, talking about the, the coronavirus that's happening right now, right? And we kept hearing the, the people that were most susceptible were 60 plus. So now think about that overall healing within the body and the ability to heal within the body. Um, so 60 years old, a bit slower healing process, it's best to space it out every three to four weeks. Um, and really what we're doing is, and, and if you accidentally make a mistake of treating them every week, what you would be doing is creating an injury, creating an injury over an injury over an injury, and never allowing the body that downtime to heal. So will they see results? No. That's why it's so important if they're under 60, you're spacing it out every two weeks, so you actually allow those fibroblast cells to start the remodeling process. And then over 60, it's a bit slower. So again, allowing them the time that their fibroblast cells need for the, for the fibroblast cell proliferation. All right. And then one maintenance treatment every three to four months. Some patients can hold results longer post baby belly um, on a young mom. They can hold results six months, even up to a year. So I would say, um, I wouldn't necessarily wait a year. I would say for all of your patients, at least every six months. On your older clientele, I would say every three to four months is much more optimal. All right, so um, let me just look at the chat here. There's a few questions. Let me see if I can answer them. Actually, what I'll do is I'll read through them during, during our um, bathroom break or after we're done. Um, so at this point, we're going to take that quick 10-minute uh, break and, oh, perfect. It's 11.20 right now, um, my time. So um, I'm, I'm uh, California time zone. So in 10 minutes, so 11.30 for me, we will come back and we're going to go into the ST workbook. Okay, I'll see you guys in just a bit. Sorry, by the way, I just recommend not signing off because it's it's just going to be hard for you to, to get back on. So I would just keep your keep everything on and you can just walk away from it. Um, that's typically the easiest.
All right, I'm just um, just pulling up the next workbook here. Okay, now I'm going to go to share again. We'll do view full screen. Okay, yay. Now we have the ST uh, workbook pulled up. And we'll go through this handy. Um, and then for those of you guys that are reaction customers, again, it's the same thing. And by the way, I'll just um, mention the difference because there is a bit of a difference in the, the amount of jewels you can use with the reaction ST compared to the VST. Um, so within the new platform systems, and that's what the VST um, is connected to, we changed the pulse duration a bit in this handpiece than, than the reaction. And what that means is that the reaction is delivering in a very quick pulse duration, where the new VST is delivering in a slower pulse duration. So when I start to talk about energy and I start talk, talking about if we're using like 80 joules of energy or even up to 90 joules of energy with the VST, you're probably like, what? We can never get that high. And that is true because the pulse duration is much faster and it's really quick punch. Uh, so typically they're not able to handle the amount of energy that you could potentially use with the VST. That is the only difference as we go through this. It's the same protocols, um, so everything stays the same there. Okay, so let me just erase whoever is writing on the screen here. I'll just erase that. Okay, and now we'll get going here. Let me exit out of this. There we go. All right, so everything that the VST can treat. So it says eyes, lower face, lips, neck, stretch marks, and scars. But I want you to think of this handpiece pretty much you can treat from head to toe. The only thing we really need to avoid is the thyroid. Just It's just a precautionary measure. But there is a way of still treating that skin over the thyroid. So if you were to treat for the neck, what I like to do is gel the area of the thyroid. Do the full treatment there wipe off the gel. And the reason I just do that first before I do the rest of the neck is because you have to be able to pull the skin over and off the thyroid. So if there's gel here, you can't pull. So I just gel right there, pull the skin all the way over, treat that tissue, wipe off the gel, and then treat everywhere else. Other than that, this can treat uh, full forehead, we can treat above the brow and below the brow for a brow lift. And anybody that has like excess skin or hooding, we can treat all the way down into the lids. And I'll talk about how we do that. We can treat crow's feet all the way up to the lash line under the eyes for any type of like crepiness or even dark circles. Um, we can treat nasolabial folds. We can treat the full lower face. We can now plump the lips naturally with our new um, protocol, Plump RF, which is really exciting. Um, and we'll go through that because it does more than just plumping the lips. Um, as I spoke about, we can tighten the neck. We can treat the bra lines on the decollete. We can uh, treat the hands, uh, tightening the skin on the hands. Um, we can do stretch marks and scars on the body. We can do like over the kneecaps um, and also labia. So if you guys are not treating the labia yet, I highly, highly recommend looking into that because it's such a big, big money maker, but it also just changes so many women's lives um, because I know it's not probably a conversation that's out there too much, but there are quite a few women that are needing it or wanting it um, because of aging, um, because of um, post-baby, post post-pregnancy, having natural births. Um, so it's, it's definitely a concern that women want. And for this, it doesn't leave any downtime. It's not painful. There's no risk of infection. They don't have to avoid anything after the treatment. Um, so it is 
such a popular treatment that I would highly recommend um, offering it. We have training videos. The protocol is called Revive. So we have training videos. Um, if you guys are one of our US customers, we have the um, myviewer.com customer portal that you can go on there and watch the training video if you're gonna do it. Um, for those of you that are international customers, uh, the distributors have a VSP um, and with all of this material, uh, including the training videos that you can always get from them um, or even just from, directly from Viora if you're having a hard time locating it. So, um, oh, that's what I was going to say. There are disposable tips that clip onto either the Reaction ST or the VST if you guys have the V10, V20, or V30. And they're disposable tips that actually just clip on because, I mean, you think if you're using this on the labia and then, you know, doing the lip treatment, it's, it, that's a concern. So um, you can order those. I believe they come in a pack of 10 and those tips never expire. So you can keep it in a little bag with the patient's name on it and that tip would be used every time they come in for their treatment. But additionally, you can save it for their maintenance sessions as well. So, and they just clip on. All right, so now we'll go into um, the actual hem piece. So we already went through what is radio frequency. So it's the same thing with the VST because it's also using radio frequency. So we're getting the cells to oscillate. We're generating heat. Therefore, we're simulating fibroblast cells to then um, go in and, and, and create neocollagenesis, new collagen, strengthening elastin. So we get a tightening effect to our tissue, but also a thickening of our skin. And that's what really helps, like I was saying, with dark circles, because it also increases circulation, but it also thickens the skin in the area. So you don't see those dark circles as much. I know there's a lot of questions coming in, so um, I hope you guys can stay to the end because I'll definitely get to them. Um, so now we have two ways of delivering RF, right? We already spoke about this and we also already went through the VST is bipolar energy, right? There's two electrodes on the handpiece. So one of the electrodes is working as the positive and the other electrode is working as the negative. So it's delivering and then receiving. So very controlled, very safe, very comfortable. We spoke about this as well. In specific, we're working with the reticular and papillary dermis because the VST, it stands for Viora Skin Tightening. Um, so that's what we're doing, stimulating that, that collagen. And in specific, it's collagens one and three. Um, and with the ST, we also have core technology. So we, the exact same core technology that we went through with the V-form, we implemented it into this handpiece as well. Why? If we're not needing to go into the fat layer, let's say. The reason being, and by the way, it's a very precise measurement because with the V-form, there's a vacuum. So the measurement of depth of penetration really depends on the vacuum that you're using. Um, so it will vary. With the VST, there's no vacuum. So it's a very precise measurement. So you can see here at the bottom, mode one, when we're using that deepest depth of penetration, 0.8 megahertz, we're reaching all the way to 7.2 millimeters deep. So now think of like stretch marks and scars on the body. We need, they're much deeper, right? It's on the body, so they're already gonna be deeper, but typically stretch marks and scars are very deep as well, reaching all the way into the reticular dermis. So we need that depth of penetration. Now we look at like mode two, it's 1.7 megahertz. We are reaching 5.1 millimeters deep, a bit more superficial. And then mode three, we're 2.45 megahertz. We are reaching 3.9 millimeters deep. So I also want you guys to think of where are you treating? Are we treating the forehead and eyes? Those are bony superficial areas. So we need to make sure to stay superficial, um, which would be the 2.45 megahertz, which is mode three. Um, if we're going deeper, all that we're gonna do is bypass the dermal layers. That's where we wanna be. A lot of times it goes so deep that it just reflects off of bone and we're not doing anything for them. Um, now also think of like a lower face. The thickness of skin and the amount of fat somebody has, and additionally the thickness of skin, really varies from if they're 70 years old or 40 years old, like myself. So we need to be able to target where their reticular dermis is and where their papillary dermis is compared to mine, which is gonna be deeper. So we need that controllability. So that's why we have that core technology. And additionally, we have mode one, two, and three that I just spoke about also mode four, which is the combination of all three, and we'll talk about that in just a bit. 
Okay, so I'm gonna stop here and just point out a few things. Um, we're always using ultrasound gel with this handpiece. So glycerin, 100% vegetable glycerin with the V-form, and then always ultrasound gel with the VST. Always make sure that you are ordering clear ultrasound gel. Do not use blue or green. Blue or green can be cheaper. However, there's dye in it and the dye cannot withstand very much heat. So what happens is it melts down, it becomes thin, it slides off the face, and really the biggest thing is using thick ultrasound gel with this handpiece. So if it's just melting off the face, it's, it's a mess and it just isn't providing what it should, and that's the thickness. Um, my favorite brand, and I'm not sure if you can get it all around the world, but if you can, um, is Aquasonic. So Aquasonic, it's clear, but it's also a very viscous consistency and it stays thick and that's what we need. If you have ultrasound gel and you're kind of questioning the thickness of it, it kind of seems watery, put it in the freezer. If it freezes, then yes, there's too much water in it and you want to find something that doesn't freeze and is very viscous. Um, but ultrasonic is a great one. And we're using two millimeters of ultrasound gel. So it's about the thickness of these electrodes. So it's really nice and thick. If you ever question, do I have enough ultrasound gel on the face? Just add more. It's better to have a bit too much than, than not enough. And if you ha don't have enough, there can be two problems. The ultrasound gel is working as the conduct conductivity of the energy. So it's pulling it down into the tissue, but it's also protecting the epidermis. So if I pulsed on my hand right now with no gel, it's gonna immediately blister. So now if you have very little gel, that's when they can feel very high, strong bites of heat and they may jump, or it may create a blister because you don't have enough. So a bit too much is better. Um, all right, what else do I wanna mention here? Okay, so now I'm gonna actually go down here to the chart. So here is just an example of how many passes you need per area. I put six, we need, well, we put six for all areas, really six passes. And what a pass is, I'm gonna show you on the, I'll show you on this side, my lower face. A pass is considered just passing over the tissue one time. Your zone size is gonna be about the size of a woman's hand. So you can see I could do my full lower left side of my face, in one zone area, then I would move to the right and do that in one zone area. If I try to do the full lower face all at once, by the time I get back to where I started, that area has already cooled down. And that's what we do not want. We wanna make sure each pass is done in under two minutes, so that really goes with the zone size, that it's a build on heat. Each time you pass over the tissue, the tissue gets hotter and hotter and warmer and warmer, and will eventually then stimulate that the fibroblast cell stimulation that we're needing. So a pass, I'll just show you a lower face example. You're not moving this quickly, just for um, time's sake right now. Uh, first row typically is right above the jawline. Second row is typically right below the lip. And you're going all the way out, all the way out towards the ear because we get crepiness in this area as well. Then the third row starting right at the corner of the mouth, all the way out. And then the fourth row is typically right above the lip, staying below the cheekbone, all the way out. We finish the lower face by going down the nasal labial fold, and then we cross hatch it, meaning then I turn it at the opposite direction. So I'm hitting it horizontally, and I go down it again. Why do we finish each pass with that is because typically the nasal labial fold is where it shows the first and the most signs of aging. Okay, so that was considered a pass. I just passed over the tissue one time. So I would do six passes in that area. Now, it's, there's a note right above here that says, if the patient is older or thin skin and they build up substantial heat within four to five passes, that can be enough. So if they're older with thin skin, they can develop heat quicker. And if they're really red and really uncomfortable at a lower joule energy and you're just finished with your fourth pass, then that's okay, you can stop. You don't need to push it beyond there. Um, with radio frequency, it's a bit easier for us because it's all based on time and temperature. So with Viora's R&D over the years, we know that you need to do a certain amount of passes under a certain amount of time at a certain joule level and we're getting that fibroblast cell stimulation. With the V-form, it's really easy. We just set a timer 
and we hold the temperature that's showing on the actual handpiece and we know that we're we're getting the job done now you think about like ipl and lasers and it's a bit more challenging because it's based on us what are we seeing on the skin are we seeing are we going until the pigment darkens um, are we seeing that the hair follicle is getting that perifollicular erythema and edema, the little red dots around the hair follicle or the smell of burnt hair? IPL and laser, it's a bit more challenging because it's based on us, the operator. We need to go until we see our end point. With RF, it's a bit easier. However, with, with um, the VST, there's still somewhat of an endpoint that we need to look for, and that's redness to the skin. If you see zero redness to the tissue and they feel really no heat at all, you're probably not doing much. So there is a bit of that that, you know, you need to make sure you're doing the proper amount of passes to be able to give them the optimal result. So if you're at the fourth or fifth pass and you're not seeing that really, you know, nice redness, it would be optimal then to do that additional one. So most of the time you're doing six passes everywhere. Okay, um, so that was how many passes? Now I'll come here. Um, we'll talk about uh, cleaning a bit, and then I'll talk about really how you're doing the treatment modes, um, passes, cross hatching, and things like that. Um, we are always cleaning the handpiece with 70% alcohol. Don't use anything else. Uh, reason being is if we start using really um, harsh products, it can damage the electrodes. And if we're not, if we're using something that's not like an alcohol base, 70% just pure alcohol, you may not be sanitizing it properly. So 70% alcohol has shown that we are sanitizing the electrodes properly. Um, and if you're going to treat areas like the labia, you have those disposable tips. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and then just really make sure when you're cleaning this, I like to use um, a spray bottle of alcohol. I don't spray it on the handpiece, but I spray it on a piece of four, uh, four, by, bleh, four by four piece of gauze, non-woven, because woven, the alcohol just seeps through it. So non-woven, four by four piece of gauze. Um, reason why we use gauze is because it's not going to leave any like lint behind. I spray the alcohol on there and then I go in and clean it. So just make sure that you're really getting in between these electrodes well. If you're not, an ultrasound gel dries in between there, then it can create a sparking and a smoking effect, which obviously isn't good. So just make sure you're thoroughly cleaning it in between the electrodes as well as around it. Um, I'll just talk about that with the V-form as well. Glycerin, because we're using glycerin with the V-form, it's really sticky, so it's hard to get off. So I do the same thing. I take a spray bottle of 70% alcohol, I douse the 4x4 four four piece of gauze, and because alcohol dries really quickly and that glycerin is hard to get off, and I clean it really well around, on top of the electrodes, and really well inside, because that is your IR thermometer. So if any glycerin gets on there, and, and it will block the, the temperature reading, and the temperature temperature reading will be off. So I just make sure to really get that saturated so it's really nice and wet with alcohol inside here, clean that really well and around it, and then the alcohol dries quickly. Okay, so that was cleaning. Now we'll go through doing the treatment. So this chart up here, this is for the lower face. So this is the only chart that you'll have. Everywhere else is just one specific mode. But the reason why we have a chart for the lower face is because this area dramatically changes throughout our life. If we're under 45 years old, our skin is considered thick. When we are from 45 to 60 years old, our skin is considered medium. And when we're older than 60, our skin is considered thin. So we need to make sure to properly put the energy where our reticular and papillary dermis are. So, um, by the way, this isn't black and white. It's actually, you can see it's gray. So that's a, a little um, trick there. This is gray. What I mean by that is typically men hold thicker skin throughout their lives. So they may be 50 years old and still you're looking at them and have really thick skin. Then it's okay to treat them in mode one and mode two if you can visually see that. Um, oily skin patients naturally hold thicker skin throughout their lives. Really dry skin patients sometimes prematurely age and thin. So it's also based on your own discretion on the thickness of skin. But this is just a nice idea of where most people fall into and a chart that you can go off of. 
Um, so thick skin, we would do mode one, our deepest depth for two passes, and then we would go to mode two in the papillary dermis and do four passes. Now, if they're medium skin, we would not do mode one, that would be too deep, we would just do mode two and mode three. And if they have thin skin, then we just stay on mode three. If we chose mode one too deep, it's gonna bypass the dermis. Um, sometimes it hits bone and it's uncomfortable and it just reflects off of bone and it's not doing anything for them. Uh, so I always recommend too, we have these charts on the customer portal. Um, if you guys are from overseas, international, you can get it from your distributor or directly from Viora. Cheat sheets that you can print out, laminate and have right there to help you. Um, okay, so a few things I want to point out. So I, I just spoke about what a pass is, but how are we actually doing the treatment? So there's going to be a few things that you want sitting next to you. Um, first, you take that sensitive skin, uh, fragrance-free, hypoallergenic baby wipe and get off any makeup or um, lotions or anything like that. Make sure the skin is clean. Then you're going to apply two millimeters of clear ultrasound gel, thick if you have it. And you're gonna have a tongue depressor. So the tongue, oops, my, just, my circuit just blew. Give me one second, let me just turn that back on. <laughs> I have a ring light plugged in, I have my laptop plugged in, I have all kinds of things going on. My, my home could not handle it. Um, okay, so what was I speaking on? Oh, the things you'll have next to you. So you'll have a tongue depressor. That tongue depressor is used to smooth and thicken the gel as you go, but really to smooth it out because your technique is a stamping technique. You're putting it down and you're picking it up and you're moving it to the next spot, putting it down, picking it up, moving it to the next spot. So you have these like little um, missing areas of gel. If you went back in for your next pass, then you could create little arcs, blisters, or it would be very uncomfortable for them. So that's why that tongue depressor is there to make sure that the gel is smooth before you go back in for your next pass. Very important um, not to skip that step. Um, also a stack of four by four non-woven gauze. Um, the two by twos are a bit too small and they're just kind of messy to be able to get all the gel off of the tip. Um, gauze because it doesn't leave any lint behind. Um, woven because non-woven the gel just kind of seeps through it and it's all over your hand and it's messy. So four by four non-woven is the best. I like to put a stack of six next to me so I know how many passes I've done because you may have patients that you love to talk to, they love to talk to you and you're moving and you're like, oh my gosh, how many, how many passes have we just done? I don't know. So if you have that, that stack of six pieces of gauze, we are always wiping the tip after every pass. So you can just put that, that um, used gauze to the left of you or right of you, whichever way you want, and you can count how many, how many passes you've done by how many times you've wiped the electrodes. So we're smoothing the gel after every pass, but additionally, we're wiping the electrodes clean after every pass. Why do we do that? We have something called tech cooling inside the handpiece. T-E-C, it stands for thermal electric cooling. And what it's doing really is it's pushing cold air to the electrodes and pulling heat away at the same time. So it's making sure these electrodes are chilled and it chills to about five degrees Celsius. So that is for the patient's comfort, but also safety. If you don't wipe the electrodes clean, what happens is the, um, the ultrasound gel accumulates around the tip and it insulates them and it's just an, an issue there. So just make sure they're really nice and clean after every pass. Okay. So oh, also, you'll want your bottled ultrasound gel. I like to use the bottle and just squeeze it out onto the tongue depressor and then smooth it. Um, sometimes when I go overseas, a lot of countries will just put um, a mass amount of gel in a bowl and just dip from it. And the problem with that is contamination. So you end up having to throw out all that gel after one treatment and you, know, you just wasted a lot of gel. So, cause you can't reuse it because reuse it you're putting it on the face. So I like to just take the, the bottle itself and you know, um, squeeze it out onto the tongue depressor and then apply it. All right, so there's a few things that you're gonna think of or need to think of when you're doing this treatment. One, are the electrodes flat? 
So you never want them angled. If they're angled this way, that is breaking the positive to negative delivery system of RF. That's what would create an arc or could potentially. Also, are they angled? Let me do it this way. You want it at really a 90 degree angle. So if they are tilted this way, so I'll show you what the handpiece looks like. It's not flat. You can see here, I still have contact, but that's gonna be a huge difference in um, their sensation. They'll feel it a lot more if it's not perfectly flat. So just always remember that. And then I also want you to remember that you're going to put down good pressure, pulse, and then pick up. So why did I say those things? One, good pressure. So you're putting it down, making sure it's flat, and you're applying really good pressure. The reason for that is pressure is key for their, um, for their uh, really the, the sensation, for their pain tolerance. If I just barely put this on the skin at a higher energy level and pulsed, that's all they're gonna feel is the RF energy. But if I put really good pressure and then pulse, it's tricking the nerve. So it's the gate theory. What do I feel? Do I feel heat? Do I feel pressure? I don't know, but I'm comfortable. So the more pressure you have, just really nice solid pressure, the more comfortable they're gonna be. Therefore, the higher the energy you can use. Um, it's gonna feel, if you're just starting out, it's gonna feel really weird putting pressure around the eyes. But I recommend trying it on yourself. Turn the energy up and just barely put it on the skin and pulse. And then same amount of energy, put really good pressure and pulse. And you'll probably never be afraid of using pressure again because you know what the sensation feels like when there's not enough. So put down good pressure, pulse, then pick up. So just make sure you're never getting in the habit of pulsing and um, picking up at the same time because you're not allowing all of that energy to deliver. Um, additionally, you want to wait until after the chirp or when you start really working with this handpiece, you'll, you'll kind of get in the groove of knowing when the chirp comes. So you can lift with the chirp or right after it, but not before it, because it does take um, a few hundred milliseconds for all of the energy to deliver. So you want to make sure that you're keeping it nice and flat with pressure and allowing that time for all of that energy to deliver into that one area. Um, you're never sliding the handpiece. If you're gliding it, all you're doing is removing all of the ultrasound gel. And additionally, you're, you're not using proper pressure. So if you're gliding it and you're just pulsing, 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 you can imagine the mess of the gel. It's just falling off the face. But the key is that tricking the nerve, releasing the energy, and then picking up. So that's why you're never gliding. You're doing a stamping technique. Um, also, it's a 10% overlap. With the V form, we have a vacuum. So the heat spreads a bit with that vacuum. So you don't have to have that perfect 10% overlap with the V form. But with the uh, VST, you do. There's no vacuum. So the energy is very precise. So you're gonna do a 10% overlap just right next to one another. I'll show you on my hand here. So pulse, 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 pulse. Pulse. Um, sorry, that wasn't perfect. <laughs> I couldn't see it very well, but a 10% overlap be, being very precise with your, with your pulsing. Um, okay, so now I'll talk about the energy that we're using joules because it's not going to be in the workbook. I'm just going to give you um, an idea of um, how we do it in the States. And it's a way of starting at an a lower energy level where they can just barely feel it and slowly titrating up to your higher energy, but doing it in a comfortable way. And I'm gonna give an analogy on that in just a bit. So a good joule to start with is 40 joules of energy. And what you're gonna do at that 40 joules of energy, you're gonna pulse four times. One, two, three, four, four or five is fine. So one, two, three, four, five. And you're gonna go up 10 joules. So you're at 50. Then one, two, three, four, five, you're gonna go up 10 more joules to 60. Um, if you guys have the V10, V20, or V30, on the right side of your screen, there's an area where you can go jump by 10 joules, and then there's an area that only goes by two joules. So to quickly just jump up, you just hit the plus on the right side, and it will just automatically do 10 joules for you. Um, on the reaction, you know you just push it um, five times because it goes by two joules. So you just one, two, three, four, five, and then continue. Okay, so we're at 60 joules. 
your goal to really start to create the fibroblast cell stimulation, your goal is always to be above 60 joules. So this is when I start to find out how much heat they're feeling. So 60 joules, I'll pulse one, two, three, four, five, and I'll ask them, one through 10, how much heat are you feeling? If you just ask them, are you okay? And they say, yeah, you don't really know how much heat they're truly feeling. So that one through 10 or zero through 10 method works well. So I'll say, how much heat? Zero through 10. If they say uh, nothing, zero, maybe a one. Okay, great. You keep going. So one, two, three, four, five, go up 10 more. Now you're at 70. Um, how much heat are you feeling now? Uh, I guess like a two. Okay, you can keep going. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're 80. How much heat are you feeling? So on and so forth. Um, where I stop jumping by 10 joules is when I get to 80 because 80 to 90 is quite, quite, a, a large jump. So from 80, I would go to like 84, 84 to about 88, um, and slowly go up from there. Um, I would say typically most patients are falling in between 62 joules at the low end to about 92, 94 joules at the high end. Your system goes all the way up to 130 joules. You're never going to be working at that high of a heat. Um, there's no need to either. So I would say 92, 94 joules is about the high, high range. And this is dependent on a couple things. One, how well do they heat? If they heat really easily, you're typically not even that high. Oh, let me stop somebody's video really quick. Oh, somebody did it for me. Thank you. Um, you're typically not very high. Um, but some people, it takes a bit more to heat them. So it's okay if it takes in the 80s to heat them. Um, additionally, what is their pain tolerance? Some people just can't, you know, tolerate much more than, let's just say, like 72 joules. So it really de is dependent. If they're very sensitive, I would use just thicker gel and more pressure. But if you're above 60 joules, then you're going to create some type of fibroblast cell stimulation and that's what you want. Um, okay, so that's how you would how you would do your jewels. When do I stop? It's usually when they say they're at about a three, four heat level because you know you're doing pass over pass over pass that you're building more and more heat. So um, if they're only at like a four when you're doing your first pass, typically they're gonna end up probably at about a five heat level. And you really never want them to be above a five because it's bipolar energy. It's made to be comfortable. Um, if they're saying that they're at like a six and you're at 62 joules and you're not seeing any redness at all, then maybe they just had that off in their mind, you know, that a six was really a two in your opinion. So talk to them, you know, is it, is it feeling comfortable? Yeah, okay, so maybe you can go up a bit more to give them those efficacious treatments. All right. So we spoke about um, adding more, and you'll, you'll tend to add more gel as you go, just because the gel does kind of melt down just a bit. Um, additionally, you're accumulating a lot on the tip and wiping it off, so you're losing a bit of gel. So as you go, just look. Is it looking thin? Add more. Um, okay, so we spoke about passes. Oh, after every pass, we're always cross-hatching as well. So what I mean by that is if you went vertically with your electrodes for the first pass, then the next pass you're going to go horizontally. So you're going to switch it. You can also move in the opposite direction if you'd like. I typically work medial to lateral. Um, reason being is I have points of interest. I know I'm starting right above the jawbone, following that all the way out. I know I'm starting right below the lip, following that all the way out. I know I'm starting right at the corner of the lip, start uh, following that all the way out, starting above the lip, following all the way out. By the way, you'll always want to stay below the cheekbone because that gives a beautiful contouring effect as well. Um, so that's, that's how I like to move, but it doesn't matter. You can move um, up one, out another, but just make sure you're always cross-hatching these electrodes. And it's just creating that basket weaving effect where you're just making sure that you're not missing any of the tissue. Um, okay, I spoke about inducing overlap. Uh, jewels. I don't think if I missed anything. I don't think I did, but I'll remember as we go if I did. Um, okay, so that's the lower face. Now eyes. So the eyes will always need to be split into four sections. Under the eye, crow's feet, 
above the brow and below the brow. And the reason why you want to split it into four areas is because it takes a bit longer to get all the way around the eye. So you'll do all six passes under the eye, then move to the crow's feet area all six passes, then move to above the brow. It's just making sure that you're generating the proper amount of heat. So I usually start on the under eye. It doesn't matter though. Um, this is going to be two to three rows in that area. And I'll take a glove or a piece of gauze and I'll really pull on the skin so I can make sure to get as much of that tissue down off the eyeball and on down to the bone. So I try to get all the way up to the lash line if I can. If, if you have older clientele, it's easy to do that because their skin is more lax, so you can really pull it down. Younger clientele, it's a bit harder, but get as close as you can there. All six passes, then remove the gel and put it here on the crow's feet area. Um, don't gel the whole eye, just gel it um, section by section. So I have them smile to see where they're creating their crow's feet. If they're Botox, like I am, <laughs> you'll just guess where their crow's feet would be. Um, and the reason why I like to have them smile is you can see them exactly where they're creating those lines. Some people, when they smile, the crow's feet come all the way down into this area. So that's nice to be able to see where. Um, and then you'll do all six passes in that area. Really doesn't matter. It's typically like a perfect little square there. <clears throat> What's really nice about um, these electrodes being so small is that you can go all the way up to um, the corner of the eye and treat fine lines and wrinkles that are here. Because when people are doing Botox, they can't get that close, right? Because they can get a droop to the eye where this can. So you would actually just put it down at the corner of the eye there, the skin, and just pull it over onto the bone. And if you feel on yourself, the bone comes so close to that orbital ridge that it's really protected there. So it's nice that you're able to treat that area. So it doesn't matter really the direction you're going in, but make sure you're cross hatching. And all six passes there, unless they're older with thin skin and they only needed four to five passes, that's okay. And then above the brow, I start in the glabella because we make these frown lines. Um, so two rows is all you need to lift the brow. So gel two rows here and then starting in the glabella, follow along the brow for your first row and then the second row starting in the glabella and all the way up and around just above that first row. Um, six passes, cross hatching. Then you'll remove the gel there clean the forehead off really well. Again, I use a baby wipe. And then I take a dry piece of gauze or my glove after I gel that area so I'm able to really pull the brow up. So if they're younger and they don't have any excess skin or hooding, then you're only typically doing one row right below the brow as you're pulling that eyebrow. Then the second row, if they have excess skin, you're gonna push the brow down and you're gonna do like a scooping technique. So if you were sitting behind them, let's say you're sitting behind me, so you're holding the hand piece just like this, you're gonna push down so you're getting even more tissue and then you're gonna get in here and you're gonna scoop it up onto the brow. Um, I'm hoping with the social distancing, it's hard, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to do some hands-on uh, webinars for you guys so I can really show you those techniques. So hopefully those will be coming in the next couple weeks. Um, and then you do all six passes. This is the only area I don't cross hatch just because for me, that scooping technique is easier to do vertically. And it's hard to really scoop that tissue sideways, which is horizontally. So I just keep it vertical for the, for the lids and right below the brow. Um, all six passes and then you're done. Um, just a trick here to make sure on everybody's first treatment to sit them up when you're done with one side because they get so excited when they see it. They see like the brow is lifted and this one's low and they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It works so well. Um, so it just gives them that bit of excitement and encouragement for the treatment. Um, when they sit up after you're done with both eyes, there may be a difference, but it's harder to see because you don't have something to judge it. And when you have the left eye done and the right eye not done, there's a huge difference in how it looks. Same with the lower face. They'll see a difference after typically one. So I like to sit them up and show them after their first treatment. And then it's okay after the other ones, they already have the confidence that it works. Um, now, I'll talk about Plump RF. So Plump RF, we are always making sure to protect 
the teeth before we ever begin. So you would take a four by four non-woven gauze. You can see how, how this um, type of gauze is very needed for these treatments. You can't put anything like tissue in the mouth because it just, it gets wet and dissolves and it's messy and you don't want that. Um, so that non-woven piece of gauze, you'll place it in between the teeth and the lips. Um, I'm going to be doing some Instagram lives uh, coming up. If you guys are following our Instagram, it's Viora Med and um, also Viora Life. So on Viora Med, we'll be doing Instagram Live on Thursday. It's called Cocktails with Kara. So we'll be having cocktails while I'm talking about the treatments. And I'll show you guys uh, um, actually how to insert the gauze and do the um, plumper off treatment. But we put the gauze just nice and flat. So let's pretend like it's in my mouth. It would be just like this, actually, just like that. So in between the, the, chi, um, the gums and the teeth. And the reason why we have it nice and flat inside the mouth is one, it's keeping all of the ultrasound gel out of the mouth. Remember, we have to use a lot of ultrasound gel. So they would be pretty much eating it. Oh, let me stop some of the video really quick. Okay. Um, additionally, it's helping to dry the wet dry line. So I'm able to really pull the lip out as much as I can. Um, and then really moreover, it's protecting the teeth. So if you accidentally slipped, it, it could potentially crack a tooth and you don't want that to happen. Um, so you do four rows for Plump RF. So I put gel all the way around on the lips and then around the mouth. And the reason why we do four rows is because Plump RF does more than just plumping the lips naturally. It also helps lift the corners of the mouth. As we age, we get a downward droop to our skin. So when we do the row all the way above the lip out to the nasolabial fold, it helps lift those corners. Additionally, it helps create that nice um, shelving or ski slope appearance to the lip. When we have youthful lips, we have a nice ski slope. Uh, appearance to the edges. And additionally, it helps any type of fine lines and wrinkles around the mouth. So that's why I do all four rows, um, or why we do all four rows. Um, so the first row, just right below the lip. Second row, right on the actual lip. And take your time, really be looking and making sure the electrodes have good contact. Um, second, or third row, sorry is above the lip, starting out at the nasolabial fold because you want those corners to lift, the corners of the mouth. It also helps define the cupid's bow, which is really beautiful, all the way out. And then fourth row, right on the lip, and be very careful, you're really watching and making sure that you have good contact. Um, if you can't get the electrodes to fit, especially on the upper lip, because upper lips can be smaller, then just straddle the vermilion border. So it's okay if some of the electrode is on the lip and some of the electrode is on the skin, that's okay. Um, but you know, try to get, on, get it on there as much as possible. And you would do six, um, six row, I'm sorry, ah, six passes of those four rows and you're cross hatching every other. So nice and easy. We're always using mode three. Um, other areas that we're using mode three are bony areas like the hands, um, the labia would be mode three, um, eyes, forehead, lips. Okay, so now we'll go move on and we'll talk a bit about uh, stretch marks and scars. So stretch marks and scars are very difficult. They're hard to treat, reason being is it's dead tissue in the area. However, we're lucky because it's surrounded by healthy cells in the area, living cells. So with stretch marks and scars, we are always using mode four. So why are we using mode four? Remember, mode four, one third of the energy goes to all three depths at the same time. So stretch marks and scars, they're superficial. Sure, we can see them, so we can see that they're superficial. But if you look at a histological photo of most, uh, most scars, they reach all the way down into the reticular dermis. So that's why we are able to get really nice results because we have all three depths that can penetrate the depth of the scar to help shrink the, the size of the scar. So that's what it's doing. All of those living and healthy cells are really working with the dead tissue there and it's helping to shrink the size of them. Um, I highly recommend if you guys have like microneedling and do microneedling, that after you're done with the VST, that you're going in and microneedling. So you're getting a thermal 
um, injury with a mechanical injury. So it really helps speed the process of, um, of the results. If it's somebody's abdomen that has had a baby, so it's um, laxity post-baby, also stretch marks post-baby, you can do the V-form treatment, refit, which is also gonna help stretch marks and scars because it's collagen. Then you can put gel over the stretch marks and use the ST, mode four, six passes, and then you can put numbing cream on them, sit for 30 minutes and wipe off the numbing cream and then do um, microneedling on top. So all three together really give those optimal results. If you do PRP, great. You can put topical PRP while you're microneedling. So even better results. So just think all the things that you can use in combination to really give them the, those optimal results that they're looking for. All right, and then the VFR, we're gonna talk about VFR next week on a webinar that works really well for stretch marks and scars. So we hope that you're able to join us on that one. Um, all right, so now we'll talk about um, number of treatments. So here it says four to six treatments. And again, just like I was talking about with body contouring, it said three to eight, how I recommended six to eight, it's better to have too many than too little because even though they may be um, happy at four treatments, what if they weren't? What if you're like, oh shoot, we should have done a couple more. Um, so I actually recommend a small package of six and a large package of eight because some need eight treatments. You know, if it's a lot of aging on the skin, deep lines, um, they will, it will be beneficial for them to do eight treatments. So I would do small package of six, large package of eight. Um, treatment intervals will be one treatment every two to four weeks, just like the refit protocol. Under 60 every two weeks. If they're older than 60, they need a bit more healing time, so then every three to four weeks. And then maintenance would be one treatment every three to four months, just to maintain those results, which really falls in line with that collagen remodeling, right? We stimulate those fibroblast cells, and then three to four months, we get neocollagenesis, and then it's time for them to come back for their next maintenance session, and we just repeat the process to maintain everything throughout their lives, really slowing down that aging process. Um, by the way, your, your before and after photos, your after photo is not at their last session for the ST or the refit protocol, because remember that collagen elastin is still strengthening even after their last session for three to four months after. So when they come back for their maintenance treatment, that's when their after photo would be. And that's when you can sit down and show them before you ever did your treatments at your last session and now three to four months later. And they can see that nice progression and get really excited for their, for their results. And then um, after their after photo, then you would do the maintenance treatment. Okay, so now I am gonna go into we lift, which is our last one to go through, and then we're gonna do questions. Um, now, I, uh, I just gave you already a lot of protocols you could do for the lower face. So when you first start with, um, with Viora, it can be a bit confusing of what protocol do I use for the lower face, because it can do so much. We already know we can contour the lower face, we can do refit on the lower face, we can do ST that we just went through on the lower face. And now I'm gonna give you another protocol that we can do on the lower face. So in the beginning, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many, I, I'm not sure what to pick. So you can always reach out to us or this webinar is gonna be recorded. So you can always um, go back to the webinar. It's gonna be sent to you guys um, as a review, which will be nice for you guys. Um, but what's so nice is that we do have so many protocols, not to make it confusing for you guys, but to be able to tailor it to any patient that comes in. Because if a woman that's 45 comes in and needs, um, you know, it, overall aging and needs treatments, not every 45 year old woman or 50 year old man is going to have the same issues for the lower face. So that's why it's so nice to be able to tailor it to them. So what I recommend just on a piece of paper, I'm going to give you some notes to write down um, to really just keep it easy for you guys. So the first protocol we went through is contouring. Let me take a sip really quick. Okay. It's contouring. So that is when we're using um, mode one for 10 minutes, then mode two uh, for two minutes, and mode three for two minutes as a review. So contouring is going to be patients that are younger, 
They don't have any issues with skin laxity and just fat related. So contour, you can write down contouring, young, fat. So that's your target is fat. And this is someone without any laxity, but maybe has like a double chin, maybe wants to strengthen their jawline. So that would be contouring. Now, refit. What I would write down is refit older. And what I mean by older, it could be my age, 40, but older meaning there's signs of laxity. So older with minimal fat. Refit, older, minimal fat. What I mean by that is they have jowls, right? They just have a little bit of fat accumulation here, a little bit of fat accumulation here, but also laxity. So just a review, remember refit, we're using mode four the whole time with this one that we're treating one third fat volume and two thirds skin tightening. So it's gonna shrink that bit of fat accumulation they have here, but also tighten the skin at the same time. Then I would write down um, ST or VST, older, again, older meaning it could be me, 40, but visible, visible signs of aging. Um, and thin, no fat. Because if they're really bony and thin and don't have any jowls or fat anywhere on the lower face that, that is an issue, and you try to go in with vacuum, it can easily bruise. There's gonna be complications there. They don't need that. All they need is skin tightening. So you can do the full lower face. They're thin, you're just wanting to thicken the skin, not treat anything that, you know, fat related. They're thin, they don't need their fat that they do have in the face removed. <laughs> so just the ST. Um, and then this can be done, of course, here in the submental as well and the full neck. Now I'm gonna give you another protocol called relift. So what you can write down here is relift older, again, just visible signs of aging with more fat or more bulk. And what I mean by that is looking at this photo here. She has quite a bit of fat accumulation on her submental, on her lower face. It's not just a little bit of jowling. There's, there's actually quite a bit of volume there that we need to get rid of. So there's the difference between refit and relift. Refit is when it's just a little bit of that fat accumulation, jowls, um, and, and laxity. Relift is a lot more bulk in the area, a lot more fat volume in the area, and signs of aging. So those are the differences. Um, okay, so Relift, it's a nine-week protocol, so you're treating um, once a week for nine weeks, and it's going to be a combination of contouring to get rid of that heavy bulk in their lower face and or submental, and then skin tightening to help with any laxity. So week one, you would do contouring, lower face, remember, never go above the, the, um, the cheekbone because we want to keep the fat volume here. That's what gives us our youthful appearance. So contouring here on the lower face and here in the submental. Never contour on the neck. It easily bruises um, and you do not want to do that to the neck. So just where you're seeing that fat accumulation typically right here in the submental area. And you would do that week one, contouring, then week two, same thing, contouring, and then week three, you would go in and do skin tightening for the lower face and the neck. Then you would do that two more times over. So contouring, contouring, skin tightening. Contouring, contouring, skin tightening contouring, contouring, skin tightening. So that would be every week for nine weeks. Now you can see how many times you're doing contouring. That's why I say they need a lot more bulk in the face to need this treatment. Um, refit is one third fat volume and two thirds skin tightening when you're using mode four. So that's when it's just a minimal amount of fat. I hope that helps. And I didn't confuse you guys. All right, or someone like her. She's a great relift candidate instead of refit because she has more bulk there that needs to be addressed. Um, now we'll go into number of treatments. So we know it's always nine. Uh, treatment intervals, we know one treatment per week. And then maintenance is one treatment every three to six months. 
a good way of maintaining results is doing the refit protocol. So now that you're done with the relift, because here, which handpiece do you maintain with? Do you do contouring or do you do skin tightening? Well, typically people would do the ST for the neck and lower face to maintain. Um, but another good way of maintaining is doing refit with the, with the V-form. So refit um, and then using the ST for the lower neck. It's a good way of maintaining. You could also just maintain with the ST, especially if they're thinner at this point and they really don't have any fat volume there, um, then it would just be ST. But if they do, uh, refit is a nice one and then ST on the neck. Okay. So um, things like the contraindications, the consent forms, um, those are all going to be on our practice development Skype. Uh, so that's next week. We hope you guys can join us for that one. Um, so just a few things I'll talk about post-treatment. So um, there will be um, some mild redness with all of these treatments and some mild heat that lingers for about 30 minutes to an hour. So these two hand pieces are really considered no downtime because they only stay red for about an hour at max. But a big thing is making sure that they don't run to the gym right away while they're still warm. And the reason for that is the potential of PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. If they're still really red in the area that you treated, and then they go and work out and they build a lot of heat within the body, that's when you can get that um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation issue. So it, it's okay if they go to the gym. If you're doing V-form treatments, it's actually really good to go to the gym after. But just let them know, wait a couple hours, let the tissue cool down, then they can go to the gym. Um, if patients want to work out before the treatments, that's okay too, especially if they have areas of poor circulation, like if they have really bad cellulite. Sometimes it's nice if they work out before the treatment because you can easily heat them then because that circulation is going. Um, the only downside to working out before is that they need to double their water intake. So if their water intake is proper at two liters a day, then they need to double that to, or even three liters or four liters. Three, three liters is probably enough. The reason being is when we work out, we lose water. So making sure that they drink at least another liter of water before the treatment. Um, making sure that they don't um, use really hot water after the treatment. Um, wearing sunscreen and not so much the reason of laser and IPL. Laser and IPL, we know it makes the skin very sensitive to the sun and you can easily burn yourself um, in the sun after a laser IPL treatment. RF isn't going to do that. However, our biggest culprit of aging is the sun, and it dramatically breaks down our collagen and elastin. And that's what you're wanting to do with these treatments, most of them, is build the collagen and elastin. Actually, all of them, even contouring and cellulite, we're still doing that skin tightening at the tail end of, of, of that treatment. So any of these hand pieces, you don't want them to go bake in the sun when you're trying to work with their collagen and elastin. It's just going against you. So making sure that they know to wear a high SPF if they, <clears throat> if they are going to get in the sun. And that's what's nice about radiofrequency treatments is that it's colorblind. So they can do these treatments if they're tan in the middle of summer. Um, however, <laughs> just making sure that you educate them on the importance of trying to stay out of the sun. And if they do need to be in the sun, wearing that high um, SPF factor 50 or at least 30. Okay, I think I covered it um, pretty, pretty thoroughly. Um, however, I know there's going to be questions. So what I'll do, because I have a lot in chat here, I'll first read the questions that you wrote in, and then I'm going to open it up to you guys can unmute yourself and ask questions um, as well. Okay, what's the price? Oh, um, I got a question, what's the price? I'm not sure when that came in. Maybe it was the price of the tips, of the disposable VS um, T tips. And they're really different because um, I have a lot of international people on here today. So they're going to be uh, obviously different prices um, for your country. Uh, so I recommend just checking in with your distributor. They'll know the pricing. Um, and then for if you're living here in the States, then you could just go to myviora.com and they will be there within the store. So you can, um, you can order them from there. Um, oh, I got, it's an amazing session. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. 
Um, hi, let's say they get six treatments, get three treatments, then disappear and life happened. They come back in a month or more and what many more treatments can we do in this particular area? Okay, so I got a question, I'm gonna read it. Um, okay, hi, let's say they bought six treatments, they did three treatments and then they disappeared, like life happened. Um, and then they come back in a month or more and want to continue the treatments, same area. How many more treatments can we do in this particular area? If they really disappeared, I would start then their series over. So I would do then, okay, it, it really isn't gonna show a huge improvement. They've been gone for months and months. Then when they come back, start over doing those full six, six sessions again. That just reminded me of something. Let's say that um, a woman comes in with post baby belly and it's not just laxity and stretch marks that she has. Let's say she has some very stubborn fat that's left from, from being pregnant. How do you treat that? I would start, you can sell a larger package, like a larger package of 10. And I would start with contouring. So she's coming in every week to contour the area. Once you get the area contoured and now it's just laxity that you're seeing, then you can switch over to the refit protocol. I just thought of that. Sometimes those things um, pop up. All right. Um, in a clinic, we have other devices also like Nsculpt, CoolSculpt, Dermage, Haifu. How to plan a combination for best result for a client who is in-house client and like to take yearly maintenance. Also, please let us know when we treat stretch marks. The percentage of improvement. Uh, okay, unfortunately, I can't give like a typical percent because everybody responds so, so differently. So I more so will refer to like if they're wanting what percent is going to be gone or what, what percent of improvement am I going to get? Because we can't give a percentage, I like to just show the before and after photos um, so they can get a more of a visual understanding because every patient is so, so different. You have, may have patients who smoke, who drink, who do not stay out, stay out of the sun, who don't drink proper water. And then you may have the opposite patient that drinks a ton of water and exercises and have healthier tissue. So it's, it's um, really can't put a percentage on, but we have a ton of before and after photos that you can um, gather from Viora or even yourself as you're, as you're um, treating patients and showing them that way. Um, so then, uh, they had another question about, you know, they carry other devices like MSculpt and CoolSculpt, how to plan a combination for best results. Um, if you want to, if this was you that wrote in, if you're still on the call, you can unmute yourself so I can better understand um, because there's so many conditions out there, right, that it depends on what is the patient needing and, and then I can help with an overall combination because we can use the V-form with CoolSculpting. Um, but if you're still on, you can unmute yourself so I can help a bit, bit more. So a lot of our doctors, if they have cool sculpting, they will use, um, use cool sculpting, or I'm sorry, use Viora for tightening the tissue after cool sculpting, post cool sculpting. So, um, different things that we can do there. But you can unmute yourself if you're still on. Okay, I got what filters do you use for the small handpiece? I think they're talking about like the filters that filter out the glycerin, um, which would be the internal filter here. And it's those round um, cylinder type filters. Those need to be looked at every week. Um, I think the new small handpiece using this. Oh, thank you, Safi. Safi wrote in and answered that question. Okay, I think so. Also regarding ST hippies. I would like to ask about result for orbital area and dark circle plus puffiness. Is it effective? Very. Um, so they're asking questions about the VST in, in different concerns. So um, the, okay, dark circles. So it's going to help in the way of increasing. So there can be different types of dark circles there. Um, it, okay, I'll say this. Even though there's like different like blue and like dark brown circles, what we're doing is we're increasing the circulation in the area and we're thickening the skin. So when we thicken the skin, the appearance of the dark circles 
it, it doesn't show as much. So it can really help with that. Um, now puffiness, it depends. Is it puffy like it's an actual fat pad there or is it puffy from edema? So either or it can help though. If it's edema, we can help just flush out the fluid in the area. And what really helps is if you have a microderm abrasion with a vacuum, taking the vacuum on a, on a um, if you have ours, the pristine, um, on a low vacuum like a two, and increasing the circulation and lymphatics in the area. So you can help the puffiness and then the ST. That really helps with overall just fluid puffiness. Now, if they have a fat pad, um, I actually have, we have some doctors that have gone off protocol and they've gone a bit deeper in that area to help the overall fat. But we don't have a, an actual protocol for that because it's off protocol, but they've been seeing a nice result um, doing that in that area. Um, so it really depends. You can always unmute yourself if I didn't answer that properly. Or, you know, if I didn't answer it the way you were asking. <laughs> Okay, VST, older people for full face. Do you go above the cheekbone or is that never done in any situation? Um, okay, so with the VST, you can take it, you know, in, in this area if, if you're needing to do skin tightening, yes. Um, the reason why I said stay below the cheekbone is it just gives a really beautiful contouring effect to the face, which typically we all want. Um, so that's when you would stay below. But if they have like, you know, maybe um, textural issues and maybe some deep lines in this area, absolutely stay superficial mode three and you can do skin tightening um, in this area here. Um, how long does the effect last after six to eight sessions or does that fat come back? How much weight reduction can occur? Okay, so I'm gonna first address the weight reduction we're never telling them that they're gonna lose weight with this, the, these hand pieces. Um, they're, they're not a weight loss. They are a contouring effect. So, you know, someone has a little bol uh, pooch on their abdomen and we wanna contour that down. It's the appearance, not the actual pounds on the scale. Um, that being said, I highly, highly recommend weighing your patients every time they come in to make sure that they're not gaining weight throughout the treatment because then is it gonna work? No, if you're doing contouring and cellulite and they're gaining a lot of weight and you're trying to contour the area, that's just going to go against the results. <clears throat> so making sure to weigh them. Also, are they losing a lot of weight? I would also weigh them for skin tightening. We have had cases where patients come back and say, this, this um, device made my skin even worse. It made even... Um, it created even more laxity when it was really that they were losing a lot of weight and they're not realizing that weight loss, fat loss creates laxity. So that's just a protection for yourself that you can see, well, they've lost 20 pounds since then. It's not the device. Um, so I would weigh it really anybody that's coming in. And we talk a lot about that with the practice development Skype next week. So I hope you're able to join that. Um, so we're never saying weight, like, oh, you're gonna lose 10 pounds from this. It's just not a weight loss device, we can't. Um, now, how long do the effects last? If they're staying on maintenance, they can maintain that smooth appearance of cellulite. Um, they can maintain that little pooch, the, the stubborn fat that they have in an area. Um, however, making sure that they understand in a consultation that they need to maintain their weight. Otherwise, of course, it can come back. Um, so if they're you know, really living that healthy lifestyle, they're eating properly or they're they're working out, they live an active lifestyle, working out and eating properly. It's just stubborn fat that they have or um, uh, stubborn cellulite that they have. Yes, the, the effects are gonna last and they're still coming in for that maintenance once every three to four months. Hope that helps. <laughs> of course, you guys can unmute yourself if, if that was your question. Uh, thanks for informing the session. You're welcome. In my experience, some people can't stand more than 45 joules, me included. Um, okay, so I just got a, um, a message that they cannot withstand more than 45 joules. If you really are doing um, the things that I kind of walked you through, making sure you have enough gel. Add more gel. Maybe it's too thin. 
use good pressure. Maybe you are just barely touching the skin or just not having that really solid pressure. That's typically the number one reason why people cannot withstand higher energy is that they're not using that really solid pressure. So pressure is key with the ST treatment. Gel is key to the ST treatment, making sure it's really nice and thick. Um, also, making sure that the electrodes are really flat on the skin and you're not angled in, in um, that kind of direction. So it's that 90 degree angle, nice and flat. So try that um, and, and it should really help fix that issue of not being able to stand higher energy. Eyebrow with micro blogging. She probably meant, or he probably meant microblading. What are your recommendations for ST around the eyes? Oh, maybe they didn't mean that. Micro blogging? I've never heard of that. If you're on, you can unmute yourself and um, I can help you with that question. All right. Um, Viora RF lip plumping treatment is really cool. Oh, yay. I'm glad you like it. It really is amazing. The results are phenomenal. And it's doing it in a natural way where, um, you know, they, they may not even need filler when they're done because their lips are plumbed beautifully, but naturally. So it has that natural appearance. If they still want a little bit more volume, then the injector doesn't have to use as much product. So it's still going to look more natural. And the results can um, last longer too because the collagen is still remodeling for months after their last session. So, so glad you're, you're liking the Plump RF. Um, I had to step out. Uh, oh, someone said I had to step out for a call and you had just said cocktails with Kara. What is that and when? <laughs> um, so that's going to be our Instagram live uh, this Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. So New York uh, time. Uh, zone. And we're going to have cocktails together and just really go through all questions um, regarding Viora and just talking about like, you know, cool protocols, things like that. Um, okay, where could we get these videos to rewatch? I haven't been emailing them. Um, you should. So an email goes out of the recorded um, webinars to you guys. If you haven't received them from the past, just email marketing. So um, email marketing.usa at vioramed.com. Again, that's marketing.usa at vioramed.com um, or clinical, clinical USA. It doesn't have a dot in between. So it's just clinical USA at vioramed.com. And we'll make sure to send uh, these webinars to you. Okay, let's say, all right, let's say did two cycles of relift and client lost significant weight as well. Can we simply continue with ST and how many more treatments of ST lower face can be done? Of course, if um, let's just say they got like gastric bypass or something and they're losing a significant amount of weight as you're doing relift and you're like, oh my gosh, they're, they're very thin at this point. Yes, absolutely switch it to the ST. Um, just be careful of in total, you're not doing more than like 12 treatments. Um, and then after you've done 12 treatments, if, if you're even needing that many, uh, stop. Wait three to four months. See how the skin responds. Because a lot of times they, the skin will dramatically tighten three to four months after that last session. Um, and then observe the skin after that. You just don't want to do too many and create a thermal injury that is not uh, controlled. So well, I would do 12 max. Thank you so much for today's session. You're welcome. Uh, good presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, okay, refit protocol for lower face. How many treatments? Uh, also four to six every two to four. It's, um, so refit, it's, it's dependent. So I would do um, like a minimum of six or eight and a max of 12. Um, and yes, the refit is going to be every two to four weeks. Best if they're younger than 60 every two weeks, if they're older than 60 every three to four weeks. Um, okay, how do you use V-Form for cool sculpting? Um, it's really used in conjunction for tightening the tissue after cool sculpting. Um, you're going to wait, oh, let me 
see, gosh, I just drew a blank on the guidelines for cool sculpting after, because I know some of our doctors have actually used the vacuum with V-Form um, because the patients have to massage the area after to just make sure that um, they don't get like any of that crystallization in the area. Um, so they do um, massage. So a lot of our doctors have actually used the V-Form, just the vacuum and turned the RF off to massage the area for them. Um, and if they have any laxity, I would say two to three months after the treatment and, and there's some significant laxity that you're seeing, then you can go in with uh, the refit protocol to tighten the skin. <laughs> Someone wrote something and said, oops, ignore. I will try it, Pristine Plus ST. Yeah, um, if you guys have the Pristine Microdermabrasion or a different type of Microdermabrasion, I highly recommend just always doing Microdermabrasion before any treatment in general. Um, it's gonna do a couple things. One, it's gonna remove the dead skin cells so you have a better depth of penetration. And two, with the vacuum, it's gonna help increase circulation. So the overall tissue is just gonna be healthier and respond better to the RF energy that you're putting into it. So just a very quick, think of like your microderm as just a prep to prep the skin. Um, so a very quick prep and you'll really get those optimal results. Uh, thanks a lot, dude, bad network, could not participate. Oh, bummer. But you have already given some combination and protocols during the post break session. It's amazing knowledge, sharing session with you. Look forward to the upcoming sessions. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Um, if you feel like your network connection isn't great, um, I have told some people to try to like reboot their router. Uh, sometimes we haven't rebooted our router in so long, um, but that sometimes can help. I actually, since I've been holding all these webinars, I had to go and buy like a crazy router. It's huge um, and upgrade my Wi-Fi. So I feel like I have like Wi-Fi that huge corporations have at this point, just to be able to um, hold these webinars with you guys and not um, not have any issues. So um, the medium hand piece filter is too long for the small hand piece. What is it? Medium hand piece filter. Too long for the small hand. They're all the same. So. Um, so the uh, large, the medium, and the small all use the exact same cone cylinder cone filters. So it should fit. Um, if you're having an issue with kind of getting it in and it seems like it's kind of poking out, for some reason, um, just contact your distributor. If you live here in the United States, uh, then just email customer care USA at bioramed.com. Um, okay, is there such a thing as too much RF treatments? Yes. Let's say someone that does multiple areas of the body and face, obviously not at the same time. How many zones can you? Oh, okay, that's a good question. So I spoke about really the max and, and stopping in one area, but now we'll talk about if they want to do multiple areas in one day. Um, if it's something like contouring, be careful because we're, we're really working with the lymphatic system. We don't want to overload that. One, so the body can naturally break everything down, but two, so they don't become sick because then it can become toxic to the body um, where they become very nauseous, lightheaded. It's kind of like if you get like a deep tissue massage, it's also working with the lymphatics. And the first thing that the massage therapist says is drink a lot of water after this treatment. So same thing. And with, and I recommend that too, after the V-form treatments is drinking a lot of water after. We just don't want to overload that lymphatic system. I would say do not do more than three areas in a day for contouring. So like, you know, doing cellulite on the back of the legs, the two legs and an abdomen. And that would be it just to not create those issues. Um, skin tightening though, it doesn't really matter. You can do, you know, full face skin tightening in the neck, for example, in the same day, that's fine. All right, um, V-form, what if someone is at 42 or above before preheating? I've never seen that. <laughs> Maybe they're running a fever. Um, they really shouldn't be above 42 degrees. Um, that is just not, it's not biologically okay. Um, so 
I would first, if it's reading that, I would really check and make sure that your IR thermometer on your tip is really clean because that's when it could give a, an incorrect um, uh, bad reading. So really make sure that you alcohol that off um, well because they really shouldn't be at that temperature. And if you're still seeing issues, then if you're in the States, email us, customercareusa at viewermed.com, or if you're overseas, then just contact your distributor um, so we can help you with that. Um, okay, I think you were already given viewer on microneedling than PIP. Much, oh wait, more such combination as per indication. I'm looking up to when I ask for combination. I don't fully understand that. So if that person is still on, you can unmute yourself and ask me so I can just better understand. They're asking about combination, um, microneedling PRP, more such combination as per indication. I'm looking up to when I ask for combination. So yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask me um, a, a bit more about combinations. Um, but yeah, you can do RF, microneedling PRP, same day, gives great results. If somebody has a lot of aging on the skin, you can do like ST, let's say on the forehead and eyes. And then we can do like refit on the lower face and ST on the neck, for example, and then um, microneedle that area and then, you know, topically PRP that area. And it will really help speed up just the overall um, results for them doing those combinations. You can add um, IPL skin rejuvenation into that as well in the same day. So make sure to join us on Thursday. Um, and we'll go through the full IPL and I'll talk about those combinations in a bit more detail. Okay, thanks a lot, and a great explanation. Looking forward for future sessions. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks for joining. Um, emails are going to be sent out. Oh, this is from Biora, um, our marketing, uh, marketing manager. Emails are going to be sent out. Also, when you visit um, Biora online. Okay, so she's telling us that visit uh, VioraOnlineAcademy.com and you can watch the recordings for all the courses there and then also we'll send out an email. Um, how often do we change the applicator heads on the reaction? Thanks for asking that. I didn't, I didn't mention that. Um, so you have a timer. Uh, oops. Sorry, it just said my um, internet was unstable. So um, you have a timer on the reaction and it counts down. So um, it's 60,000 minutes for the VST and then for your BC and FC, it's 6,000 uh, minutes for those heads. Um, now you have two little tips per handpiece and you'll switch, you'll only use one tip for half the life of the handpiece. And then it starts to get kind of compromised because of the glycerin and it can kind of um, pop off when it's not supposed to. That's when the second tip would then be placed. So it's about 3,000 minutes um, with the first tip. And then when you get to about 3,000 minutes or it starts to kind of um, not clip on and hold onto the handpiece as well, then that one is no longer needed. You can go into your box and get your new tip and use it for the rest of the, the time. Um, Omar! Uh, one, of, <laughs> one of our distributors is, uh, just popped on. Hi, Omar. Uh, okay, so thanks, Carol. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Let's see here. And you guys can unmute yourself if you have questions. Please feel free. Um, Okay, for under eye dark circles with wrinkles, static dynamic and pigmentation in a 24 or 24 year old girl, what percent of improvement can we expect? Again, it's so hard to give percentages, to be honest with you, because it's a 24 year old girl, you know, she's tipped by, you know, ho hoping there's no underlying health condition. So thinking, you know, healthy and young. So a lot of collagen and elastin there. Um, it's just, you know, it's hard. I, I don't want to say we're going to get 80% improvement and, you know, she, she may not respond, um, as well as somebody else. So 
I, I know people are always wanting percentages and I can't, I just unfortunately can't really give a percent just because it's so, it varies so, so much. Um, so I would more so, you know, lean on those before and after photos, showing them the results that are to be expected from, you know, our hundreds of patients around the world. We have so many before and after photos that you can get from Viora if you don't have your own. Um, you know, with that girl that maybe you have in mind, um, making sure that you can work out something with her, you know, like making sure you get really good before and after photos that, that you can use for your other patients in trade of maybe like a discounted treatment with her. Um, because I know some patients don't want to do a photo release where you can use those photos for your consultations or for your website, for example. So doing a trade with them and a discounted package to be able to get those before and after photos to help when people do sit down and ask percentages, you have that to lean on. You know, this is the improvement that um, some of my other patients had. Uh, Carrie, you're a fantastic educator. Best RF training ever. Oh my gosh, thank you, Jenny. Uh, she said, Carrie, you are such a fantastic educator. Best RF training ever. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Best compliment ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, very well explained in detail. Thanks for a great session. This must be people that are logging off. You're so welcome. Um, okay, with the skin tightening, how long do you have to wait between Botox and filler? Oh, okay. So um, with skin tightening, your, um, your wait is five to seven days after Botox and two weeks after natural filler. So your, um, your typical filler is really what your body naturally absorbs. So um, something like a hy hyaluronic acid-based filler, um, that's gonna be two weeks. Now, if it's um, something like silicone or if they have PDO threads in their face, these are not natural and they easily melt down with even very low heat. So you cannot go over silicone and um, you wanna make sure that the PDO threads have fully dissolved before you do any radio frequency. Um, I think it's, uh, oh, I just forgot the company. Nova Threads. Nova Threads, it's about six weeks wait period until you can go in and do um, RF. Um, now, some of our doctors have used it off protocol that if a patient had PDO threads somewhere else and they were not good, you can see the puckering or they were too superficial so you can actually see the thread. They have gone in with the ST and just melted it down just by pulsing over it about six times and they can see it dissolve. So you can actually fix threading issues, um, but that's completely off protocol. Um, on protocol, we wait until they dissolve. Um, okay, also, how long do the results last after a series of about six treatments until they should get their next session? Um, I would say stay on maintenance every three to four months. I mean, of course, if I did a series of six lower face RF treatments, let's say, and I stay on my maintenance every three to four months, I'm still going to age. I can never stop an aging process, right? Um, just like if, if I had a facelift today, would I still have the same result 10 years from now? No, we'll never be able to fully stop aging. However, we are dramatically slowing it down and keeping the integrity of their skin really beautiful as they age. So um, if they're staying on those maintenance sessions once every three to four months, they can really maintain results beautifully. Um, okay, I hope next time you can share with us more details about your, about Revive. Oh, um, about Revive. So I, I can absolutely share the details about Revive. Um, so they were asking about the uh, labia treatment. So we're able to treat the labia minora and majora. And um, I typically work, the. It, some people don't need the minora done. So I will work in vector rows. Um, I usually stay on the left side of the, the labia um, first. And that's so I can show them after I'm done with the first session, I can give them a mirror and show them the difference between the left treated side and the right untreated side. And it's always like, a, oh my gosh, wow, and they're so excited. Um, that's just for the first session. But you'll work in vector rows starting, um, I like to start from top, work to bottom, um, staying on the labia majora. If they need the minora done, 
you can use a trick by using a tongue depressor and putting the labia minora on the tongue depressor, putting gel on it, and just doing six passes. It takes just a couple minutes to do six passes. And then I flip it and, and put the tongue depressor on the opposite side of the minora and then do the other side, six passes. So doing both sides, but using that tongue depressor so you have like a steady surface to be able to put good pressure and keep those electrodes nice and flat on the minora. Um, and that's about it. We're using mode three, whatever, you know, jewel that you've worked up and titrated to um, for their comfort, but also efficaciously, you know, making sure you're above 60 joules. Um, there's areas that can be very bitey with the revive treatment, especially as you work down lower. Um, there's a lot of nerve endings, especially on the labia majora, as you work down um, to the lower portion. So that's why I use really good pressure and really push so they're comfortable. Um, the minora usually is comfortable because it doesn't have a ton of nerve endings. So um, you would think that would be the most uh, uncomfortable and typically it's not. Really the only thing that kind of hurts is actually the pressure with the electrodes on the wood stick. Um, but heat, not really, just because there's not a lot of nerve endings there. Um, and that's about, you know, that's about it. It's a pretty easy treatment to do. It takes about 30 minutes. And then there's that training video I was telling you about. Uh, thank you from Ireland. Amazing as always. <gasps> oh, yay. Our, um, our Ireland distributor is on and I, I love them to pieces. I love the Dubai distributor to pieces. So I'm just so happy that you guys are on. There may be other distributors that I know that are on here and, I, and um, you guys can say hi too. But thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, and I just got back from Ireland actually and it's the best trip of my life. It was amazing. I drove almost the full country and it was really a phenomenal experience um before all this crazy stuff started happening and now we're locked indoors okay um let's see what other combination oh hold on this people are writing in so i just lost my place there we go what other combination treatments can be done for dark circles i mean you can always um combine the dark circles. So when you're doing, like if you do microneedling on, on the area, so RF to thicken the skin, microneedling to thicken the skin too, but you can also add a um, brightening complex within your microneedling to help brighten the area. Um, if you guys have our infusion device, the infusion device has a brightening complex. So you can also be using that in, in combination with the ST. Um, you can also prescribe, I see that you're a doctor. Yes, you're a doctor. You can also prescribe things like hydroquinone to, to lighten the area if that can help. Um, sometimes it doesn't though, you know, because hydroquinone can work really well of, of, on like melanocytes that are superficial, but dark circles can, it sometimes is not um, that great for that area, but it never hurts to try things like vitamin C, kojic acid, uh, just to brighten the treatment area, microneedling with brightening complexes. But the biggest thing is really making sure you thicken that skin so you don't see the dark circles as much um, and increase circulation in the area. Um, okay, I hope that helps. You can unmute yourself if you want to ask too. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Amazing as always. Oh, thank you. Series for body contouring can be repeated in how many months? Um, a full series of body contouring. Um, so let's say you did an abdomen and you did 10, 12 treatments and they needed more. You'll just, you know, make sure to wait um, a good four months just to not injure the tissue at all. Um, and then you can repeat another series. But typically if you're doing like 10 or 12, 12, you know, make sure 12 is your max. If you're doing that, typically they're not needing it. Now, if they are, maybe they're just a, a, a much higher BMI where, you know, is this, uh, this kind of comes down to, again, like a consultation process. If they are a BMI of 35 and higher, then it's the, the, making sure that you're confident enough to sit down and talk to them about, will this treatment really give the results that they're wanting and needing? And, you know, it's, it's definitely not going to be a miracle 
for someone that is a much larger BMI. It does work wonders on, on things like, you know, stubborn belly fat, but also keeping in mind, well, they're a, a patient that has a BMI of maybe 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, where it's going to work really well. So um, if you did a series of 12 and it's still not showing like the result that they're looking for, also consider those things because 12 is a lot of contouring and it should give a really good result on the proper patient. I hope that helps. Uh, no words can reflect our respect. Oh, no words can reflect our respect to your personality. Oh, wait, someone wrote in. Uh, no words can reflect our respect to your personality and information and skills. That was more than great. Thank you so much. Best compliment ever, Safi. Um, of course, we and I love you so much and we miss you a ton and so happy you're able to join these webinars um, and we're going to keep them going you guys so please join Thursday join our Instagram live on Thursday um, and then Thursday morning is going to be IPL so we have a lot of um, you know continuing education going but wonderful compliment thank you so much Um, hi, Kara. This is Maya from Doing It. Hi. Um, I hope you and your family and your loved ones are all doing well during these tough times. You look amazing as usual. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know I'm, a lot of people are at this point, no makeup, hair in a bun, in their pajamas because everyone's home. Uh, so I still get to do that on some days, but uh, other days it's like normal. I get up, I <laughs> I shower, blow dry my hair, and put makeup on. Uh, and it, it's keeping me definitely sane doing these webinars, um, you know, needing to do that. So thank you so much. Um, the most lovely, informative, and positive trainer. Thank you so, so much. Such sweet, sweet, sweet words. You guys are amazing. You're making my day. <laughs> uh can you go above 12 sessions i wouldn't <clears throat> i wouldn't go above 12 sessions this is when you get into the the issues of um creating really thermal damage to the tissue and you don't want to do that and especially you think of things like um skin tightening and you do 12 sessions remember their after result is not at their last session their after result is three to four even six months after their last session the skin keeps improving. So make sure, stop, give it that time. Maybe you did not need to do another um, series of treatments, you know, because you just were patient and waited. And they need to be patient too. You know, collagen, it's such a slow process within the, the skin. Um, but that's what makes these, uh, these, um, sorry, the, that's what makes these treatments so popular is that, sure, it's a slow process, but there's no downtime. We're not cutting the tissue and pulling and making them look like they're not themselves. Um, you know, we're working with the skin and its slow ability to produce collagen, but we're not giving any downtime. So no one would know that they were even having treatments done. Um, it fits into their busy lifestyle. So um, definitely stop at 12, give it time, and then come back and reassess. If you're going to be on with us Thursday, though, I'm going to talk about doing IPL monthly, and, and that doesn't need to stop. So there are things that can be done still continuously monthly treatments. It's just RF in general. It's so precise, and it's so controlled, and um, really, we don't want to overheat the area where um, doing too many or above 12 sessions could create complications. Um, where things like IPL, it's a dispersed heat that we can continue to do those monthly. So if they're needing to do things or keep wanting to do things every month, they can. So I hope you guys can join us on Thursday um, for the IPL session. Um, agree, very great webinar. Thank you so much. You guys are so kind. Uh, does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask any questions? I'll give it just a minute. And if you are unsure of how to unmute, it's just, a, I'm not sure if you're on your cell phone, but if you're on your computer, it's just down at the bottom. It might be. <laughs> 
down at that bottom, I'm not sure. Um, but there's a little spot where you can unmute. No, no one wants to talk. Okay. Um, in, in the past, my past webinars, I had a lot of people unmute. So I thought maybe I would today. I just wanted to give it a bit, a bit of time just in case someone didn't know how. Um, but, some, oh, did someone just unmute themselves? Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. My name is Dr. Adnan. Uh, I didn't want to break your record of not having un anyone unmuted today because you said <laughs> it happens every time. <laughs> There's a question too. I would just take the opportunity of asking that question too. And the question was that obviously I did join late. So uh, if you can just tell me quickly in, in a few seconds or a minute, the different types of uh, probes that we've got there. Is that uh, possible or is, am I asking for too much? No, no, not at all. So what we covered, and by the way, oh, someone's writing on the screen. Um, by the way, you, these will be recorded, so don't feel like you missed anything because you did not. Um, anybody that joins sure. us will get an email with the recordings, so you'll be you'll be good there. That's great, no problem. Yeah. So, that sounds good then. Okay, and then what we covered today is the V-form, so the V-form for contouring cellulite, skin tightening on the body, and then we covered, yeah. um, you may have been on for the VST for skin tightening really head to toe, but you will get the recorded webinar, and thank you so much for unmuting yourself. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the <laughs> webinar. Thank you. Good. You're a great speaker. Thank, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I feel like I'm usually a better speaker when there's people in front of me because <laughs> I have, you know, people to kind of uh, respond to. So it's so different. I know you guys are all out there, so it makes me feel better. Like you're just right there. Um, but it's harder, you know, you're alone. I'm sure everything's harder these days. Someone wrote on the screen, <laughs> and I don't know what it says. Can we do RF4? And I cannot read that. You can always do um, the comment in, in the comment section uh, questions, and then I'll be able to read it because you can type it out. Doesn't look like I'm getting any pop-ups here. Okay. All right, you guys. So um, starting to get quiet. Uh, I just want to thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Um, we all love you. Um, you are our Viora family. So we are here with you um, through all of this. And we're going to keep continuing doing these webinars. Um, webinars. <laughs> webinars. Um, and doing Instagram Live. So you guys can keep your continuing education going. And I think that's what's so nice right now is that we usually never have time for this. We're so busy. We're running a million miles an hour. So, um, you know, trying to think of like the silver lining to this, that we actually have time to, to do this continuing education. Um, I got one more comment here. Just don't want to miss anybody's questions. Can RF be used for breast lift? Ah, I thought it said breast, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it can. The only thing you do, you do not want to do is go over the actual breast tissue. And that, again, is just a, um, a, 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 you guys, I can't talk. You just sound like a bird. Precautionary measure um, to not go over any of the, the breast tissue cells, um, just in case any type of like cancerous uh, cells in the area could be there and then it could be blamed on you for doing the breast. So just don't go over the breast tissue. But however, you can take the RF above the tissue and help lift that. And that's going to be another good combination is doing um, RF on the decollete to, to lift and microneedling so you can get an even better lift. If you have the pristine microdermabrasion or just microdermabrasion in general, do microdermabrasion beforehand to really get that circulation going. Um, and, it, and it can help lift uh, that breast tissue. All right, so I guess it's time to say goodbye. Um, 
again, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope all of you guys can join us on Thursday, um, which is going to be the IPL. We're starting an hour earlier, so it will be 9 a.m. my time, um, and I am California time zone, just in case you're international, that can help. Um, and that's about it. All right, we'll see you guys on Thursday. Thank you so much.